This is Cybert signing into General's Zero Hour on the map, DEFCON 6. But we need to increase our security level to DEFCON 3 for this special three-player FFA on DEFCON 6. You can see there are literally just half of the spawns empty on this match. Kicking it off on the left side as the orange USA laser, this is Chris. Why did they decide to play a three-player FFA on a six-player map? I don't know, but I believe they also did random spawns because one guy is all the way on the left side of the map, and then on the right side of the map, we have as the GLA Vanilla, Windows 98, Plain Cyan, and as the Minty Green, GLA Talks, this is K. That green is just so fitting for a GLA Toxin player. Now, look at the minimap. Two guys on the right side, one guy on the left side. It doesn't seem quite right, but this is apparently how they decided to spawn. Now, as always with laser, you always got to worry about your power. When you're playing against a laser guy, you got to worry about killing his power. Well, K has pretty quickly identified that, oh, actually, I should probably just expand over here and uh, take some of these oil derricks if no one is there. One of the advantages, I guess, of GLA is being able to spread out quickly and take those oil derricks and expansions in various places. And turns out the Chris in the Twitch chat right now is not the same as the Chris who's playing in this game. So this is indeed H2O Chris in game. And I guess it's a different Chris from Germany in Twitch chat. Uh, K being a little bit annoying here. A little bit of a bugger. You have to say he's being a bit of a stinker. A little barracks gremlin spreading his barracks around the map. And in this case, he's going to be giving one of them to Windows 98. So uh, a couple of laser Humvees coming in here for Chris. He's got lots of room to expand. And it looks like he is starting to expand out to one of the nearby supply stashes. He should be able to keep a lot of that burning. I mean, he should be able to just take two expansions at once, potentially, as long as he keeps a little bit of defense back at home. A couple of laser Humvees. They're going to trade out two laser Humvees for maybe not even one technical. And actually, there's a couple of rockets in this building, and so everything goes down. That was just a big L for Chris. Now, behind the scenes, he's got a Patriot missile system coming up. He's got laser Humvees going for the scout in the top left, and I think they're starting to put together the pieces of where they have all spawned. And, of course, Windows 98 and K right next to each other. Windows 98 ready to go down the ramp, but it's going to take a while before he can actually burst up the ramp of K. Okay, he's got six technicals, but the bunker and the stinger site are more the problem makers for anyone trying to assault up that hill. Cox and Rockets going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these quad cannons. Technicals now going to be coming in, going for the crush on the RPG troopers behind the scenes, but they're actually just going to skip past the quads, skip past the scorps, go past everything, go for the trucks and the economic harassment. One Scorpion tank is here for Windows 98. Going to get a kill on two technicals there as they try and exit. And I don't know that that was actually a very successful harassment attempt from K. I guess it did take the pressure off of his front door. And maybe he's going to get the kill on the supply truck in the back line. This is supposed to be the safe supply truck that's expanded away from your opponent. And that's the one that's being harassed. Meanwhile, K has also snuck a stinger sight just down onto the low ground. I love that as an early warning system. If you've got a little bit of extra cash, you can at least buy a little bit of time. And if your opponent doesn't deal with it, you're just doing bits of damage and attacking them as they're trying to move up into your base. Palace is already here. It takes a while to build, but it might be going down. He might have to rebuild this relatively soon. And goodbye, Palace. A couple of Scorpion tanks are standing by, but K is about to get dumpstered if he doesn't stop this force. At the same time, a couple of uh, laser Humvees may be moving out on the south side of the map, so Windows 98 may be called off on the attack, but not by K. And uh, I assume K has got some forces coming in from somewhere. 
but he's got a couple of Scorpion tanks. They're going to be able to chew away at some of these quads. RPG troopers coming in from the south destroy those tanks, and K cannot stop the bleeding. Random Barracks on the north side of the base going to actually distract these units from the more valuable targets in the middle of K's base, and this might just be it for K. He maybe snuck something out somewhere? Oh, he may not. That's the end of the command uh, center, and, well, a Barracks is sneaking out. So K is technically still in this. He's about to lose his second supply depot in his main base, and at the same time, Laser Humvees there looking for some easy targets. They're going to go for the oil derrick, so there goes even more of Kay's income. He does still have an arms dealer. He does still have a palace as well. And Windows 98, he has a bit of a parade push going across the map. These two guys are just going to turn into a K sandwich in just a moment. Chris and Windows 98, will they actually meet in the middle or will they just sort of bypass each other? Uh, Chris, he might actually swing down into Windows 98's base. Chris has taken some additional oil derricks on the south side. There goes the arms dealer and the palace will be next. You rebuild it and it just gets knocked down a second time. Okay, snuck a barracks into the very, very back of his base. He is going to be losing the oil derricks to engineers as Windows 98 has also taken that building near the middle. I guess K does have these two technicals down here, still just hanging out there. But Windows 98, who I feel like has maybe underperformed in some of the other team games, is performing really strong here in sort of a 1v1 setting. Of course, it's a three-player FFA, but it's basically a 1v1 between Windows 98 and K until this moment. And Chris is going to get the kill on the technicals. He's going to get the kill on the supply stash as well. A couple of Raptors swing in. They absorb a couple of rockets, but they get on out of there without too much damage. Windows 98 now realizing that he has a bit of trouble to deal with. This is just laser Humvees, so they can be brought down relatively quickly, but the first particle cannon is out on the map. Chris has got the super weapon. He is starting the first countdown timer, and he is hoping that is going to be his ticket to victory. Oh, all right. Oil derricks are being taken back. K is hoping that just no one will pay attention. He managed to keep alive that supply stash as well, and he's rebuilding his command center. I believe you can rebuild a, uh, a worker from the barracks and restart your command center. So K is just going to, I guess, restart over here. He could potentially even take these oil derricks, which are reasonably far away and in a corner. He's going to clear out the building of Windows 98. And Windows 98 and Chris, they have certainly turned their attention towards each other. And this is where I wish we had a chat replay from the actual game. Because I would be curious to know if these guys were actually talking to each other. Like, Windows 98 and Chris are like, hey, uh, K is 99% dead. Let's just make sure we go and kill him so that he doesn't have one of those epic come-from-behind FFA victories. It's Laser Comanches, Paladins, and Humvees against Scorps, Quads, and RPG Troopers. Windows 98 seems to have the thinner front line, but he is pushing Chris back. Scorpion tanks, Raptors coming in for a big pass, but they don't do much at all. Those Raptors maybe clean up one quad as they dump all of their missiles into a single target. Paladins trying to deal with the quads, and Chris is going to have to turn tail and run. His Comanches just got cut to pieces by the massive anti-air of Windows 98. I mean, the guy has 88% quads and then RPG troopers and scorpion tanks to go along with it. So if you are going to engage with laser Comanches, you absolutely have to dance on the edges. But what doesn't have to dance on the edges is two particle cannons now counting down against two GLA players. Well, one and a half, maybe. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Two GLA players. K is pretty much back up to not full strength for where he should be, but he is certainly stabilized. And because he pivoted a little bit to the west of his starting location, he now just has two bases. He's got a command center. He could easily send another command center over to the more easternly base and just 
have a good time rebuilding and taking two bases at the same time. Armadillo Outpost is here to help anchor this defense. Particle Cannons are also here. Particle Tanks, rather, are also here. Particle Cannons are here, and they'll be coming a little bit later, but uh, some kind of A-10 Warthog strike is coming in. One or two of them may actually go down before they actually get to they, their target. Ah, and it forces the sell-off of that War Factory. K is haunting the beast. K has realized, perhaps, what is going on. Particle Tank's going to be able to eat up a couple of these quads, and the Laser Humvees and Paladins are going to try and fight the rest of this army. Particle Tank's picking off quads one by one. This GLA force is commanding a lot of respect from Chris. He does burn down a couple of engineers as they try and take those oil derricks back. Uh, Laser Banshee's moving out. He is either going for the backstab or he's curious as to what exactly K is up to. But this is ready for particle time as well. Old screen shakes when that boy fires off. Burns down a couple of supply depots. And, uh, well, the first strike has happened, but no, uh, no damage to the army, at least not just yet. We'll see if the next one burns down a, a section of this GLA army. One supply center taken out. Maybe also a barracks or an arms dealer got eliminated. The production of Windows 98 seems to be a bit weaker. Boy, there it goes down. Sneak attack from K, and he says, I am not down or out yet. And he's going for the particle cannon. But, um, well, it's not quite going to work out as he hoped. He's running for the uh, corner, I guess. This is not garrisonable, and I guess he could try and take that garrisonable structure. But at the same time, we see on the minimap Windows 98 moving out into the middle of the map. He's like, hey, what's going on over here? K is just actively expanding into the middle of the map. And, well, it might be a bit of a K sandwich once again. Windows 98 and Chris attacking from two different sides. Chris cleans up the oil derricks. He says, if I can't have them, no one can. And that is a lot of particle tanks. Go again. Fire again. You do have to admit, they did an amazing job on the visuals in this mod, especially for it being a mod, you know, 100 years after the original game came out. Sneak attack comes back. Rebels in the back door of K's base. Windows 98 is saying, I've done it once, I can do it again, but let's see if he can, because K is a lot better well set up, or maybe he's not. He's just got a couple of rocket buggies here. He's got a lot of forces streaming in from across the map, but it's going to take them a minute before they actually get here to defend this location. Chris moves out into that blank space, but then decides to back off. Now would be an excellent time to attack Windows 98 and just go all out on eliminating his base while his entire army is away, getting trapped in the corner of K's base. Windows 98 was hoping he would have a repeat of earlier this game, but it is not meant to be. And goodbye, Windows 98's entire army. He gets removed from the map. It looks like Chris burned down a couple of more GLA buildings. He's hoping those particle cannons are going to allow him to just win the game outright. And, well, he may very well be correct in that assessment. He's rebuilt his Laser Comanche army, and he is ready to go once again. All right, Sentry Drones going to be the addition for the Laser Paladins, Laser Sentries. And this guy has a lot of upgraded Cold Fusion power plants, so... He's going to be potentially vulnerable to anyone who's able to sneak some units into the back of his base. Of course, he's up against two factions with no air. 
or I guess a, a faction and a general. One faction, basically, with no air units. Well, less than 20 seconds until the next particle cannon fires off, and I think that means it might be headed in K's direction. Windows 98 has been beaten back a bit. Secondary economies coming online, I assume, for all players. Yep, first couple of supply drop zones in the back of Chris's base are getting added on. And I assume K is adding on his own. Hey! We thought that might be happening. <laughs> There's something about the way the whole screen just shakes if you're nearby a particle cannon. Scudstorm is here. One of the changes to Gen Evo is that you do need a windmill, a power plant from GLA. Oh, that actually, uh, it, su it survives. To have a Scudstorm. So it does take a long, long time. That's a lot of battle buses. K is ready to siege. And he's hoping to catch Chris unawares. Particle tanks taking a couple of shots here. Paladins moving into positions. Rocket buggies are just hoping that they can thin out these numbers before the big fight happens. Because I think this is a one-to-one -one for Paladin tanks and quad cannons. Battle buses are moving out. Scudstorm has five minutes, but it's low power. Uh, is that a... No, that's a command center. He needs his... Uh, maybe a second windmill? In either case, these quad cannons are getting eaten up. Battle buses are going to try and bust in on the east side of the map. And it looks like they're going to be pushing right past the defenses, hoping to take the power offline. Laser Comanche is going to be the one thing to respond to this. A couple of these RPG troopers jumping out to distract the Laser Comanches. Meanwhile, the battle buses go deep into enemy territory and go for the power plant. A moment too late, but not a moment to stop this particle cannon. Seven seconds. No, they don't manage to clean out enough power plants. It looks like the particle cannon will be ready to go. Chris is going to have to find his target carefully. He does have two minutes until the next one. But does he want to try and use it on K or on Windows 98? The answer is burning down some of K's economy. And Windows 98 shows up with a bunch of rebels. He's going to take down the radar van of K. All GLA players, well, maybe not all, but many GLA players pack their van into the corner, keep the radar online, and just out and away from where anyone can see it. Cashback gets activated. K is going to use his own Rebel Surprise to distract and to take down Windows 98's Rebel Surprise. That was almost disastrous for Chris. I thought for sure those battle buses were going to be able to punch through and take down the power, and Chris's army was just going to be stuck out in the middle. Anthrax? Anthrax on top of the airfield. If anyone tries to refuel anytime soon, they are going to have a bad time, and suddenly... Windows 98 and Chris are actually meeting each other in a somewhat unorthodox place, some place that they did not intend to find each other. Uh, supply trucks might actually take a little bit of damage as well, right on the edge of the anthrax there. Particle tanks are pushing forward. 25 seconds until the next particle cannon is ready to fire off, but two and a half minutes until K is ready to launch his own scud storm. A three-player FFA with enough bases for everyone to have two. But they really have just stayed in their own base. They've taken some of the expansions on the side, and then they just activated their secondary income. And no one took enough damage early on that they weren't able to recover from. I mean, Kay was nearly knocked out, but even he was able to bring it back. Adds on an additional Scud Storm, adds on some additional Black Markets. Alice goes down, Barracks goes down, Black Market gets eliminated. I think K has enough income to make sure that he can come back from that Moab. 
Carpet Bomb, actually. Will find its mark, but not much damage, really. Damaging some buildings, but not actually taking anything down. Scud Storm is about to finish up. Windows 98! The only one lagging behind. Honestly, I'm surprised Chris hasn't added on a third particle cannon. And a lot more power plants. But I'm surprised he hasn't added on a third particle cannon somewhere. And, uh solidified his lead in the super weapons category. Low power mode once again, delaying K a little bit longer from being able to actually use his scud launchers. Oil derricks, they are very helpful, but they do become very easy late game targets. If this power is offline for much more, Chris could potentially fire off both of his super weapons and let them sync up so that he can take down one of these Scud Storms. We'll see if that's what Chris wants to actually do. If you can crack open your opponent's front door or eliminate their army, that can be a better use case for a super weapon. And there we go. Barely enough. He had barely enough power with 19 seconds to go. Chris's entire army is offline. The dangers of the lasers. And K realizes now the opportunity that he has. He probably should have pushed in a little bit further. He probably should have tried to go for more power plants. But Windows 98 is actually moving out on the western, on the eastern front and he might actually find a really opportune uh, moment to attack Chris. Chris has two more power plants here, so even though he has additional power plants coming online, he may go right back into low power mode if Windows 98 decides to take on those power plants that are a bit exposed. Okay, launches a Rebel Surprise, but it just gets absolutely destroyed. Way too many Laser Comanches are there waiting for that moment. Particle Cannon is ready to go. Two minutes until the next one, 15 seconds until the Scud Storm. It's the Black Markets and the Arms Dealer in the corner that take the fire from Chris. Take down those power plants. Take down those power plants. If you wanna have a chance, you gotta take his army offline. And Chris, once again, has built enough power, but there is a third power plant that is potentially very exposed, and Windows 98 could go for it. But carpet bombing coming in, or a Moab does not land. It gets off a couple of bombs, but not full power. At the same time, a Rebel Surprise comes in. K launches a Scud Storm and nukes the base of Windows 98, cutting off his reinforcements. What he has on the front lines is what he is going to have to use for the next minute or so until that until that anthrax disappears. One particle cannon goes down, and the rest of Windows 98's army has been eliminated. Chris comes in and crushes it. Chris, or K, passing back through the middle of the map. K managing to snipe some of Chris's buildings there on the north side of his base. And K spreading out to the far corners. He is going to take over the entire top half of the map. He hasn't broken uh, he hasn't broken the front door, but I guess you don't need to break the front door when you can just come in the side window. And that is exactly what K is going to do. He's got his rocket buggies as well. He is scouting out the map to try and see where Windows 98 may have hidden things. And these Scud launchers are just completely unprotected. K literally sent them in with no backup at all. And he may eventually take down this palace, but, uh, well, I guess eventually the anthrax bomb will find him. Or no, the anthrax bomb will completely miss way far away. Uh, and those rocket buggies actually got called off the attack maybe a moment too soon. Okay, I think they'll get the kill before the... Yeah. Three Scud Storms now online for K. Chris takes down a Black Market. K has so spread out up to this point that it's going to be difficult to take him down with just a couple of support powers every now and again. 
Another anthrax bomb on top of the airfield. On top of the supply stashes as well. It's not going to do too much to Kay, but, or to Chris, but it will shut down that airfield for the next minute or so. And also damaging buildings? Or just reminding Chris that he needs to restore those buildings, I guess? Repair all of those buildings. Well, the bunker does get busted, and Windows 98, who had a fantastic start, is going to have to deal with these Comanches if he doesn't want this to be his finish. K is taking over the top half of the map, and Chris might want to take over the bottom half of the map. Just uh, knock Windows 98 completely out if he can. And no, nope, it won't be yet. He'll need another try before he's able to take down Windows 98. But he has continued to weaken... Uh, well, 20 seconds until that particle cannon. We'll see what that does. He has continued to weaken Windows 98. K backs off. K has, you know, they, they came to close to killing K, but without killing him completely, they have just let him escape. Scudstorm lands on top of a bunch of power plants, but it's not enough to take the power offline. And Chris is ready to rock and roll with that particle cannon. Scud launchers pull into the base of Windows 98, but K once again doesn't have quite enough units to make it work. The Prowlis gets burned down. The windmills as well. All three timers pause. He doesn't get the kill on Black Market, but all three Scud Storms are now on pause as Chris continues to count down until his next particle cannon is ready. The quad cannon army is moving out. Look at this. The rebuilding is happening. Windows 98 has just pushed himself further into the corner. He's like, I didn't like my base anyway. I'm just going to go off into the corner. Chris and Kay, you guys can fight each other for a minute. And then maybe I'll come back in the same way that Kay did. Triple Scud Storm. Well, Windows 98, he had an opportunity to kill K, and uh, he wasn't able to do it. And now K and Chris have almost killed him. But he still has a chance. Chris is now sort of realizing the lengths to which K has grown and uh, what a problem he has become. Quad cannons coming out one after another. They're getting jumped on by these laser Comanches. And if K can take the power offline, then these laser Comanches would be sitting ducks. But for the current moment, they're just continuing to poke and prod at K. Not really doing significant damage because K has just so much stuff. But they are taking down bits of uh, his base here and there. Quads take out another laser Comanche and random rebel in the middle of the map gets taken down. Scud Storm is ready. Supply centers and power plants. Even a couple of Comanches go crashing down as Kay launches another Scud Storm into the heart of Chris's base. Chris, who at one point looked unbeatable, has been beaten down and torn down time and time and time again. And now Kay is the one who's looking unbeatable, and it will take an unholy alliance between Windows 98 and Chris to perhaps actually be able to take down Kay. Warthog Strike comes in. Sn Snipes one of those uh, supply stashes. Secondary economy is coming online, but also, well, have been online, but also Chris is expanding out to one of the untaken bases, one of the only remaining unclaimed bases at this point. I mean, laser Comanches are pretty good. 50 seconds until the next particle cannon, but only 15 seconds until the next scud. 
And it is hard to hit an army with a Scud Storm, but if you can, you can wipe out an absolutely insane amount of stuff. All right, Chris is aware of the setup of Windows 98. He kind of realizes what Windows 98 has done. Into the corner goes the Scud Storm, the only player with uh, remaining oil derricks with the original oil derricks that were from the start of the game still standing. Ooh, and K also calls in, or actually Windows 98 calls in the Rebel Surprise in the back of the base. He's going to see if he can finish off some of those power plants and take this army offline as it's marching up the hill of one of K's bases. Particle Cannon is ready. But if Chris goes offline, he's not going to be able to escape with this army, even if he's got a Particle Cannon. Anthrax Bomb on top of every single tank, and Chris's front line has been broken. He's going to have to escape from there, but it's through these rockets that he has to travel. Comanche's coming in. A couple of these tanks might survive, but a couple of them just wallowing in the Anthrax. Rocket buggies get cleaned up by the laser Comanches, but that entire tank group just got toasted. Windows 98 has taken down a couple of the supply drop zones. He's also garrisoned up a structure trying to take down that power plant, and he will get the power plant, but again, it's not enough to take Chris offline. Unfortunately for Windows 98 and K, Chris has just too many power plants. I guess he's spread them out reasonably well. But he's got his entire army still online. Scudstorm and a Particle Cannon are both ready. Particle Cannon will find an arms dealer and two oil derricks. And once again, K continues his assault at the back of the base. Breaking down oil derricks and the secondary economy. Chris is almost dead. Okay, he's got one supply center over here, supply drop zone, one supply drop zone in his main. He actually has very little income. It's one of those things where Chris had an incredible amount of cash for so, so long, but after minute after minute after minute of just constant attacks and poking and prodding, Chris's secondary economy is almost completely gone. He does still have two or three ore mines under two or three supply stashes under his control, but it's almost like his economy has completely reverted to the beginning of the game. He's at like minute four of the game when you've got your two supply stashes and you're thinking about maybe taking the expansion as well or maybe you're setting it up. That's where Chris is at economy-wise. No oil derricks, only a couple of supply drop zones. He is rebuilding more of them. Look at that, two of them finishing up in a couple of moments. Rocket buggies poking and prodding on the east side of his front line. Windows 98 thinks he's found an opening, but the laser Comanches burn through rocket buggies faster than just about anything else in this game. It's like rocket buggies. Their kryptonite is laser Comanches because laser Comanches will slice through a thousand rocket buggies faster than they will basically anything else. I feel like a thousand uh, riflemen would be much easier to defeat than, or what, much harder for the buggies to do. Ah, uh, whatever. The Comanches to defeat. There we go. I got around to it eventually. There's something about the way the laser Comanches do damage, and like, I don't know, the bonus damage to vehicles, plus the light armor and low health of rocket buggies. But Laser Comanches, it feels like, don't kill infantry as fast as they kill rocket buggies. They just delete them. All right, back off. There's a ton of Stinger Sights up there, apparently. Okay, back from the dead. Nearly wiped out, wiped off of the face of the Earth. But, he says, no more. I am here to kill push Chris out of this game, maybe. Now the Scud Storm is ready. One minute until the next Particle Cannon, but with only 30 seconds until the next Scud, K might kind of wait for two of them to line up at once. Take down much of Chris's remaining base. 
20 seconds. Ooh, Windows 98 poking his head out once again, and Chris says, do you want me to come over there? Because I can come over there. K drops his own Rebel Surprise, and K is definitely thinking about, I got two Scud Storms ready to go. You want me to use them on your base? Because I can absolutely use them on your base. Chris comes up the front door of Windows 98, and he says, it's patch time. We're going to the next level, and you are not coming with us. Unless an Anthrax Bomb can save him just like the real Windows 98 was saved by an Anthrax Bomb, but no. The Anthrax does not land, and Windows 98 is just getting pushed further and further into this corner. That is a juicy couple of shots for a potential Scud to land on. Chris moves out into the middle of the map, most likely with his laser Comanches, while he senses a bit of weakness and opening, and he's going to take down Kay's army. Scud launchers show up to the front line, and Kay's army gets deleted. A truly unholy alliance of enemies, because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But Windows 98 is beyond saving, even with a traitorous particle cannon coming in to support him. Windows 98 has basically nothing left. Oh, he's got cash. He's got cash for days. But K has rockets, missiles, tanks, and he is ready to use them all in this corner of the map. Two Scud Storms fire off. They find Chris's base, the airfield, the power plant, the rebuilding that Chris has done. K finds it. Scan comes down. Laser Comanches once again step out into the middle of the map. Particle Cannon taking a bit of damage, but another Scud is ready to go, and Chris finds himself the target once again. K has decided that Chris's new base will be the new target of his scud okay says i can attack everywhere all at once i can use everything any place that i desire another scan comes in chris is really keeping an eye on this base as k turns all of his reinforcements towards chris's base chris is gonna have to defend on about eight different fronts all at once and Windows 98, he has not given up. He literally has no production. He has no way to come back into this game. He's just got a couple of black markets and a radar van, and that is it. But Chris has been a distraction long enough, and Windows 98 has been defeated. Okay, coming back from the dead, near defeat. But he makes a comeback. Takes over the entire northern half of the map and is now pressing forward against all odds. Look at that. The Comanches just look at the rocket buggies and the rocket buggies die. Apparently they're too scared to attack the scud launchers. The tanks are holding out as long as they can. Scud launchers go down. That's a rocket from beyond the grave. Comanches show up. Quad cannons will chase them down. It's overwhelming numbers, and Chris has been defeated. K takes the first game of this subscriber replay showcase. Big thanks to Media Storm, Deadly Shadow, Freddy Eye, Anoxic Spud, Admiral Akbar 47, Josh C, The Arbiter, Yuri S, David R, Isaac H, and Paul D for supporting the channel over on Patreon. A wild first game to kick us off. Yeah, the Comanches are broken versus light armor. I think that's what it is. It's like the Comanches use their lasers against vehicles, and the lasers do, like, the bonus damage, and then those, those rocket buggies just get deleted. Welcome to Autumn Gardens for a five-player FFA. In the north, as the yellow China tank... This is McQuarrow. I should have practiced that guy's name beforehand. 
I mean, M-C-K-W-R-O. That's so many consonants all in a row. I don't... How am I supposed to... All right, let's go like a clock face. Uh, as the green China nuke, this is Kyle Vanded. I guess Vanded could be his last name. I'm going to call him Kyle because that seems easier. As the red China tank, this is Fohov, which is like a funny name to say. And as the blue USA super weapons, this is Blues. At least he is the color that aligns with his name. That's very helpful for me as an observer. Uh, and as the brown USA super weapon, this is Zouth. Zouth has a bit of a reputation in Red Alert 3 because he is a little stinker who came back from a game that he absolutely should not have been able to come back from. So every time I see Zouth, especially in an FFA situation, even though it's uncommon for someone to come back from like a... Actually, I think there was a 3v3 that turned into a 2v3 that then turned into like a 1v3 or a 1v2, and he played back from a 1v2 situation over like a 55-minute game. Just this amazing match on Magmageddon. And I always think of that. And it's very uncommon for that to happen, but every time I see Zouth, I feel like he should be doing that. Like, because I saw you do it once. You won the lottery one time. So every time I see him, I'm like, you're going to win the lottery. Right? And then he doesn't. And it's like, okay, well, that's actually should be expected. Nobody should be expected to win the lottery every time. But in this case, it's a five-player FFA. Autumn Gardens. Super cool to see this map every time. I love the lighting on this map. I only don't love the horrible shadow rendering of Red Alert 3. It is truly... Truly horrendous. Uh, I assume they had to do that for some technical reason in 2007 and 8, but uh, in modern day, just the shadows are truly the worst part of Red Alert 3. But always love games on this map because even if the game isn't super great, I like this map. I like the way it looks. I think Seguro, uh, don't quote me on that. Seguro may have made this map and uh, he updated it in between. Uh, beta version 0.2 and beta version 0.3. So this was one of the things that they did to improve the polish on the game was they went through and they improved the maps. And just aesthetically, it, it makes such a difference. And of course, it doesn't fix the balance of the game, but it is nice to have some attention to DDL. Zouth did not win that lottery as uh, he just lost like four missile defenders inside of that Humvee. And these Humvees are <laughs> taking some heavy losses. He's just losing, like, $2,000 worth of stuff in one single shot as those Humvees get blown out. Uh, it's the same engine. Oh, okay. Uh, no, they were talking about something else in the Twitch chat. I was, I was confused. I was, yes, Sage engine is actually the same engine going back to, I believe, Generals and Zero Hour. It's, a, it's obviously like it was updated over the years. But yeah, it was the same engine from Generals and Zero Hour through Battle for Middle Earth, through Tib Wars, all the way to CNC4. And uh, I mean, those games look dramatically different. And of course, you're able to see what a couple of volunteers in their free time are able to do with the Sage engine more than 10 years later, what they're able to create with it on modern hardware even though all of the code and the back end and all of the all of the under the hood stuff is very rough and difficult from 2008 anyways a little bit of skirmishes going around the map south and fuhuv both doing a little bit of a sandwich move on blues i do appreciate blues is blue uh Obviously, it's not like a requirement, but it's always annoying when someone's name doesn't line up with their color, and then it's like, the orange blues. Nobody likes that. Yellow and green getting a little bit close to each other. McWar and Kyle, they might uh, find themselves in a bit of a kissing match before too much longer. 
Looks like A10 Warthog comes in. Spy Drone is doing Overwatch on Zout's base, trying to keep an eye on exactly what Zout is up to. Couple of Gats going to be poking and prodding. Blues was hoping that he would have a moment to recuperate, but he is not being given a chance. Gats coming in, and Guardian Tank's going to be getting added on, but it might be the last thing that that War Factory ever produces with five Gats gunning it down. They stop attacking for just a moment, and actually, an additional Guardian tank does step on out from that War Factory. At the same time, Zouth going to be poking and prodding. A couple of A-10 Warthogs coming for a strike on the north side of the base. But Blues is not going to be deterred. And if he gets a moment to recuperate, he might actually come back in this game. Or he might be dead right here, right now. Both War Factories getting smashed down. The Blue is turning into a pile of goo. Unless these attacks let up. One thing that we don't see here in the game is a chat log from the match. Sometimes these FFAs or these matches are friends playing amongst each other, and they say, hey, don't attack, don't kill me, I want to play a little bit longer. Because, of course, if you're playing in a group of four or five friends, and then you die in the first five minutes, and everybody else plays like a super long, epic 60-minute game, you're kind of just stuck watching while they're actually doing stuff. Or you leave the lobby, and then you just sitting by yourself alone while your friends are playing a game. So in some cases, you will see instances where people get very close to death and then uh, someone just suddenly backs off because they're all just hanging out, chilling on a day and having a bit of fun. A couple of missile defenders are here. They're going to be able to laser lock those Gats, and this is just going to be a save of that command center. Of course, the Gats should have reacquired targets. They should have taken down those missile defenders, but they did not. And, well, I think these Gats might be able to finish the job if they get sent in. At the same time, Zouth has kind of realized that Blues has been beaten nearly to death, and we see Zouth repositioning much of his army to the north side of his base. McWur is here with a giant China tank army. Kyle and McWur are both China tank, and they can have just unbelievably powerful units, and yet... They're still building lots and lots of Gats because at the end of the day, Gats are still just really good units. Couple of bunkers, couple of Gats on the right side of the map. Blues, uh, he may be, this may be it. Firebase is here. It's going to help him hold the line for a couple of more moments, but uh, I don't know that he has much to come back with. He does have a War Factory starting over there, so if this Command Center survives, which it shouldn't, uh, he would have a War Factory. So imagine a world where he has a War Factory. Let's jump out of here because on the north side, Zouth is going to be moving forward. Couple of Paladins, couple of Missile Defenders are here. It's got, it's no Static D, so Chris might actually be able to punch through this army, especially when the army is not paying attention. Mikwer has nothing else going on in terms of a fight, and yet he is not using his full army to fight against Zouth. Blue has managed to uh, survive for a moment. I think the barracks might be his last production facility, and he does also have an oil derrick, so technically he could produce a ton of infantry and try and come back in the game. ECM is going to be coming forward. Uh, you're supposed to be shutting down units from a distance, not rushing to the front line to be cannon fodder. Ga uh, Gats are going for the crush over the missile defenders, and Zouth, his front line, is getting eaten up, and that's the trouble with poking the beast is sometimes the beast turns around and cuts your head off. But in this case, uh, these Emperor Overlords are actually just going to take a couple of shots and then back on off. Uh, oh, he got a dozer out. Blue snuck a dozer off the left side of the map. I feel like Fuhu should have been able to see that on the minimap. It is possible the vision just barely didn't go by it, but, oh, he has an oil derrick. So even if he's out of cash right now, as long as that oil derrick is around for another minute or so, he is going to uh, have enough cash to build another supply center. And the build radius is so massive on a command center that he can reach the prime position on either of these. Support power? Oh no, it was just a spy drone doing overwatch on Fuhu's base. Oh, I actually just realized uh, Mikwo and Fuhu are the China tank, and Kyle is China nuke. 
For some reason, I was thinking they were all three China Tank, but green guy is nuke. Red and yellow are China Tank. First nuke is getting added on by Mikwu. Nope, make that two nukes getting added on by Mikwu. Three nukes as an A-10 Warthog strike comes in. It's going to find a couple of overlords. One of them, it chunks down to about 10% health. The other one, it completely eliminates Alpha Aurora is here as the super weapon general gets a big fuel air bomb off on those Emperor overlords. They are going to get taken down. And what looked like a nice push on the left side of the map is going to turn into a defeat for the China nuke player. He's going to have to reposition some of his forces. Meanwhile, Fuhu moving to the north. He might be able to cut through the defenses. There's a lot of rockets in these bunkers, and bunkers should not be underestimated. It's nice if you can have something from the air to take down those bunkers and to bust them open because bunkers will chew through so many tanks as we are seeing right now. Look at that bunker. That, that bunker had a couple of tanks to block for it, and it just chewed through two or three Overlord tanks. At the same time, Zouth trying to push in. He is going to back off. Gats and Emperor Overlords are responding. And look at this. A couple of Gats could have stopped Blues from making a comeback, but... Blues is going to have an opportunity, and every single tank goes down. Fuhu did not crack the front door of Kyle. A-10 Warthog strike comes in, cleans up the Gats. He gets the Gats with an A-10 Warthog strike, and he's managed to rebuild a war factory. He's managed to rebuild his supply center. Gats pushing in, Emperor Overlords behind them. I don't think the Emperor Overlords would actually win the day, but it is going to be enough pressure to push Zouth back. Zouth can, of course, bring it back to the EMP Patriots. Emperor Overlords get cleaned up at the front door of Zouth. Maybe a couple of Alpha Auroras that get the shots off there. Artie Strike gets called on, called in. Barrage is coming in. Supply center in the middle of the map gets cleaned up. Artie Strike lands on the front door, but it doesn't bust the bunker. Bunkers are so good. Do not underestimate them. Con man, while watching Gen Evo, is saying... I've been enjoying this Red Alert 2 content. I mean, I'm glad you have. Uh, I'm hoping to do some more Red Alert 2 casting soon. But, of course, today we're taking a look at some Gen Evo stuff. Ferrex gets dropped. Okay, and he goes for the reactors in the back line as well. Nuclear missile does survive. The power is still online. I thought he was going to be going for the airfield. Because uh, taking out that China airfield can be an extremely useful way to make a bit of progress. Uh, I thought I cleared out this base, says Fuhu. Mind drop on top of the Gats. Yeah, this is this is an extremely difficult wall to break without super weapons. You can break it with support powers and tanks. Oh, and the first nuke gets struck down. Alpha Aurora Zouth knows how to party because he says, uh, the guy next door to me is building three nukes all at once. Yeah, I need to do something about that. Mikwer is here. Looks like Artie Strike comes in, cleans up a couple of MiGs, does a bunch of damage to an airfield. Might have been something else. But does a bunch of damage to that airfield. MiGs are off the deck. Double War Factory just on the left side. Maybe even triple War Factory and then two or three more war factories in the middle of the base. Nuclear missile gets restarted. Multiple airfields, multiple war, war factories on the right side of the base. Mikwer has taken over much of the center of the map also. Double, triple, quad expanding into the center ring of the map. Uh, Moab will find a bunch of gats. Gets both of the Emperor Overlords, or all three of the Emperor Overlords, actually. And the Alpha Auroras will clean up the supply center. 
both of them almost at once. I guess that was only one Alpha Aurora on the left side. Boohoo says, uh, I'm just going to take over this expansion. Wow, Mikwer is actually, like, really low on cash. I thought between all of his internet centers and... I guess he just has way... You have way too many war factories all building at the same time. I mean, having a lot of war factories can be useful, but uh, he has way too many for what he's trying to do. This nuke has yet to finish up. Alpha Aurora's coming in. A-10 Warthog Strike at the same time. He's hoping that will distract these units, but no! The Alpha Auroras are actually swinging around the right side, and they all go down. I'm not sure what the plan was there. Uh, you might need two airfields worth of Auroras. 20, 30 seconds until the first two nukes are ready to go. One is there, and the other one is somewhere else. Uh, somewhere else. There's one. I don't know where the other one is. There it is. And there's the third. All right, we found all three of them. Boohoo and Blues have just decided to live in harmony with each other down in the south. South is going to try and poke up at the beast once again. McWars says, I've got two nukes ready to go, so I'm not very worried about your little army. Firestorm doesn't kick up just yet. And where will McWar decide to use him? Because he could nuke Zouth, but... Honestly, the guy next door to you might be the bigger target to take down. That's a lot of tanks to eliminate. And then you could also just bust the front door with a double nuke on top of this area and then push all of your tanks through it. Oh. It's going to be a double on Chris. As the nukes find their mark, half of Chris's base gets leveled. Four minutes 30 until the next super weapon. Boohoo is going to try again. He said, hey, that right side looks way too fortified. Let me try the front door. I don't think the front door is going to be that easy to break into either. When, when players get... Hold up like this, RD Strike comes in, misses pretty much all of the tanks. It was a little too late, unfortunately, for Fuhu. Uh, I don't know what that was. Maybe a cluster mine, but it isn't going to land either way. At the same time, carpet bombing going to be coming in. Mikwer says, I am full scale invading. And, well, whatever that was, fuel air bomb or a carpet bomb, it won't quite land. Three matches exploding all over the place as it looks like Chris uh, Mikwo is going to break into Zouth's base, and it looks like Fuhu is going to fail to break into Kyle's base. Meanwhile, Blues just wants to live in the corner. He wants to have a bit of existence. He wants to have a bit of territory to himself, and Zouth might be the first player out of this match, despite the fact that Z Blues took so much damage early on. And yep, Zouth is going to be the first one to tap out. Fire Sail eliminates Zouth from the game. And Mikwu has struck the first blow. Zouth will not make some kind of amazing comeback at the last second. He will indeed have to fight another day in another game. This is so many bunkers. This is an absurd amount of bunkers. And I mean, he's got his whole secondary economy, so what are you even going to do about it? It's not like he needs to go out onto the map to get more money. He doesn't need to go out onto the map. He has got an insane amount of internet centers. It just it doesn't matter. I am really, really surprised he has no nukes. He is a China nuke player. He has no nukes. Uh, he's not going to be able to really do anything. That carpet bomb was going nowhere. Got out like two bombs. Dropped two bombs. 
Ah, Gat does take a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of tank hunters out, but that really doesn't matter. Yeah, what are you what are you gonna do? You can't do anything like that. You need nukes or super weapons, or you need some kind of super weapon or a bunch of support powers all working together. But Artie Strike only does so much. And I mean, artillery, you can use artillery, but artillery is going to take a long time. Yeah, actually, why doesn't he have nuke cannons? If he had nuke cannons, he could at least chip away at this. It's not like he's got a time limit. But he could at least chip away at this base and push it further back. Just the endless war of attrition. They should just dig a trench between their two bases. Big strikes coming in from both directions. Carpet bomb as well, but the carpet bomb gets immediately annihilated. Oh, it does break the gat at the front, but still no nuke cannons on either side. No inferno cannons, no nuke cannons. Oh my gosh. This is so many tags from Kyle. When you've got this many internet centers, 24 a second, every single one of them. Dude must be loaded. Boohoo's out of cash. Kyle Vanded only has four grand. Blues has two grand, and Mick Wu is almost out of cash. Mind drop comes in. Mind drop gets cleared out. Another carpet bomb? Oh, he's trying to break the front door. Oh, didn't even work. And then there were four, but there will always be four is what they said. They said, why would we ever want to have three players in this game? We can just sit here with four forever. All right, we got three nukes ready to go. Three nukes and an arty strike just fired off. Oh my gosh, where did that plane even come from? It just spawned in and it immediately got deleted. Three nukes. Ooh, Artie Strike takes down two war factories. That does cut down the production a little bit of Fuhu, but obviously not by a whole lot. And Fuhu already has a lot of tanks over here, so it's not that big of a deal. Three nukes ready to go. This would be monumental damage over here. You could try and take down the internet centers. You'd get a decent chunk of them with three nukes. But, like, I'm just amazed that no one's building artillery and no one else is building any super weapons. I get Blues maybe doesn't want to build particle cannons because it would bring a lot of attention to him. But, like, you got to do something at some point, right? We're not just going to stay in this game forever, I assume. Maybe. 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 Please don't nuke green. What do you mean, please don't nuke green? Green has stolen your heart. Are you kidding me? Critical meds. What are you saying, man? This is the ultimate camp out. This guy is camping world. I literally, I can't even tell where the yellow dot is. Hey, there it is. Oh, I see it now. There is so much stuff. He breaks the front door, and it is going to be two giant streams of tanks just going nowhere fast as this game turns into a slideshow. And, well, the tanks are going to be pushing forward on two fronts, and then also the fire bases in the south are, like, poking and prodding. They're like, hey, we're going to get a little bit of damage done. Oh, the tanks are pushing deep. Kyle says it is time to go. But honestly, a nuke on top of this army would take care of about half of it immediately. Looks like an EMP just landed. There are two nukes still ready to go, and they are just not firing off. Mikwer is hoping that he can just hold back the never-ending tide of tanks. I mean, look at this run of tanks. So many tanks pushing towards the front line. And 
And they are going for the nukes. They're trying to take the reactors down as well, take down the production, everything that they can. MiGs come in. They may be able to start a couple of firestorms, but I don't know that that's going to be enough to stop this army from crushing on forward. Overlords going for the crush as well. Two nukes still ready to go. Well, one will land. It didn't even take down the internet centers. It landed on those three and it didn't take them down. It didn't eliminate them. Oh my gosh, he just nuked the internet centers and they're still there. The command center is gone, but the internet centers are still there. Overlord step out from Fuhu, but it is just an overwhelming concave coming to crush him. Kyle says, no, no, no. It is not going to be that way. Oh my gosh. Lines up three more war factories all in a row. This guy is truly the Sim City master. I've seen some Sim City players in my day, but this guy, Kyle Vanded, takes it to another level. First of all, he looks like he's playing chess if you look at the mini map. He's building his own chess board with his own piece with his own pieces. And then you look at this line of war factories, and they're all set up so nicely next to each other. They all fit together so nicely, like blocks and double command center going to be the follow-up. And a carpet bomb as well coming in eventually. Tanks on tanks on tanks on tanks. Carpet bomb on top of the internet centers, on top of the command center, on top of the nuke as well. Kyle Vanded presses forward. A firestorm will not dissuade him. He says, onward, onward, my metallic friends. Go forward and burn those nukes to the ground. It's low power mode. You've got three nukes. You've got two nukes, but they aren't counting down until you kill one of them, and then they actually are counting down. More firestorms are coming. Kyle clears out the middle of the map as he takes down nuke after nuke after nuke. And I mean, Mikwu can still try and survive over here on the left side of the map. He's got several internet centers. As long as he keeps a command center around, he's going to be able to rebuild. He's going to be able to try and make a comeback. Everybody can except Zouth, unfortunately. The firestorm starts, a couple of bunkers get opened up, but that isn't even the first line of defense defeated yet. As Kyle Vanded sends his entire tank army into the middle and into the north and he has lost more tanks than most people even build and yet he still has more because he has infinite money it's not even a glitch it's not even a hack he is playing by the rules carpet bomb is going to find a lot of damage migs as well going to find a big firestorm but it just doesn't matter. He's got more tanks streaming across the map. He's got reinforcements coming in from the middle, although he may lose some of these reinforcements as they encounter their own groups of resistance. And maybe Mick Wu will eventually be able to stop the bleeding, stop the carnage, but not before he loses a couple more war factories, a couple more internet centers, and he's already lost every single nuke that he built. I do feel like a couple of nuke cannons, a couple of inferno cannons would be still a really good choice. MiGs find some additional targets to burn down, but they have to refuel sometime. They have to refuel someplace, and there, in the waiting arms of the tanks, they will find their demise. Internet centers going down, airfields going down. It is just a senseless slaughter and uneducated bludgeoning just crashing into the heads again and again. Why are you picking a second fight? Mikwu, you're not even winning the fight that you're fighting, and you're going off picking another fight with Blue down in the south. 
All right, Mick Wu has pretty much been beaten to death. I think he doesn't have a way to rebuild at this point. Yeah, he's got internet centers. He's got supply stashes. Uh, uh, okay, no, that's a tank. I was like, did he sneak out a dozer somewhere? Oh my gosh, he's actually gonna kick Blue in the teeth. Blue's gonna have to fuel air bomb his own command center. It doesn't actually work out, but that, uh, that gap may eventually go down to something else, to the firebase. I do like that Blue is kind of doing the American version of the bunker, which is like, have a bunch of exposed guys just stand next to a cannon and hold guns instead of, like, putting them in a bunker. But, you know, do what works. EMP and a carpet bomb come in, but only a couple of the bombs land from the carpet bomb. And Kyle Vanded can now build internet centers on the entire top half of the map. Now that two guys have been eliminated, he can cut the map in half and build in the entire top half of the map just internet centers. I told you, he was building a chessboard up here, and he is. He's going to be playing chess. Everybody else is going to be playing RTS. He's like, hey, what's this fog of war idea? What is that? Ooh. Boohoo loses a little bit of his economy. Not really much, considering he also has a bunch of internet centers also. A bunch of overlords and... Kyle is doing this without any super weapons. I guess that's the that's the answer. Normally, you need super weapons to break super defensive positions like we see in Gen Evo. But I guess the other answer is truly an unhinged number of tanks. And it's like, you have to give it to him. Compared to everyone else in the game, he has his macro figured out. <laughs> it is truly insane. It is almost unbelievable <laughs> how much stuff this guy has migs coming in uh <laughs> the migs were firing at the very back of the base they were finding a couple of power plants and a command center and fuhu versus kyle looks like it will be the last matchup of the day the five player ffa although this carpet bomb is going to clear out a section of tanks yeah, that's a, that's a big chunk of tanks gone. By big chunk, I mean like 3 out of 40. And I mean, well, you have to give it to Blues. He is fighting this out to the absolute max. Carpet Bomb comes in from Fuhu, lands on a couple of green tanks and a couple of blue infantry as well. This is so many fire bases that they are actually chewing through some of the tanks. But again, look at the minimap. Just insane numbers coming across the land. It is the charge of the light brigade, but this is the heavy brigade. And also, there's an infinite number of them. Fuel air bomb catches a couple of tanks. And this is the hydra of tanks. You just, you can't stop. As soon as you kill one, two more take its place. Carpet bomb. Carpet bomb lands on a couple of those supply stashes and... Oh my gosh, he's backing off. Have the... Oh, he's wor... Oh, okay. I think he's worried about uh the other guy. I cannot believe Blues had enough rockets to hold that off. I think that was, like, pure missile defender that actually held that. No artillery. No aircraft. He's China nuke. He has nuke migs. Why is he not building nuke migs? <laughs> One war factory goes down. That's cute. Unhinged. Also, he, I think, has built zero infantry this entire game. Maybe he built infantry, yeah, okay, to, to garrison bunkers and take the oil derrick. Other than that, zero infantry. These guys must have had some kind of agreement, no super weapons, and Mikwo broke that. 
but he's gone now, so. What was that? A-10 Warthog strike or something? <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Look at that. He took half the health off of a couple of these internet centers, but, like, what are you going to do? Maybe this will come down to Blues versus uh, Kyle. He truly has just kept building internet centers just further and further out. I love that he's got two oil derricks. Yeah, someone in the chat was like, imagine fighting for an oil derrick when you've got this much late game economy. I was like, yeah, everybody at this point has just a ton of late game economy sacked up. I don't know, I feel like Blues should probably just like, ex like send a command center up here and build a ton more supply drop zones. And I don't know, four barracks or four war factories or something, four airfields. Just take up that space up above and turn it into economy and production. The front door was left open because all of your tanks already got destroyed. And you can have a lot, but you can't have as much as Kyle Van did. Boohoo will be the next casualty of war as Kyle's relentless march takes him ever closer to victory. Still no super weapons, still no artillery. Uh, Arty Strike comes in. Carpet Bomb is coming in. Is this a Carpet Bomb? What is this angle? What is he trying to hit? Arty Strike comes in, cleans up. Oh, Fuhu used to have stuff there. That's right. Yeah, Fuhu used to have stuff there. Fuel air bomb catches a couple of these tanks, but Kyle Vanded. Oh man, look at the mini map at the top right head corner, just that wave of tanks. All right, let's go again. So many missile defenders. Gats are here as well. This is almost so many missile defenders that they just eat the tanks before they even get there. But I don't think it's meant to be. Mass Missile Defender is apparently really good versus a China nuke player who builds nothing but overlords. All right, can he do it? It's attempt number two. There is a second wave and a third wave coming now. The front line has been broken. Kyle says no super weapons will even have enough time to finish their countdown before this game is over. Low power mode for Blues as he continues to survive for a couple of more moments, but ultimately, what does it matter? <laughs> He's like, I gotta get another power plant up. I need to have my electricity online so I can see all of these tanks. And that will go for the end of the game. I think we're, I think we're there. I think we're there. He's building more stuff. He's building another barracks. Blue, I don't think you're gonna get it. By the way, big thanks to Jinwick, Dominic V, Jason V, MRL515. Sir Jack, Nakanatana Cruiser, a.k.a. Pierce, Faisal, Al J, John M, and Hawks for supporting the channel over on Patreon. That'll do it for a five-player FFA on Autumn Garden. Sheesh. Yeah, just huge numbers of units. What is the... Uh, Oh my gosh, he was still at a positive 1.39 KD. Units created almost a thousand. I mean, these two guys together are 766. Uh, and then you add, yeah, basically the top three guys behind Kyle Vanded 
barely created more units than he did. And Blues, because of all of the infantry, created lost 677. I'm guessing those were, uh, those were, like, rangers left over. Now, there shouldn't have been that many buildings. But he lost a lot, I'm guessing, because of the infantry. Anyways, those stats look a little funky. Uh, that'll do it for that game. Let's jump into another one. It will basically... It will fit all eight players reasonably well. Uh, it will... It'll, they'll kind of all fit, but there will be space to have all eight players and money counters. So, it is definitely possible. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a pain. It's a tickle process of pain to set up. Imagine that turtle style, but with the Comanches. And Ryan. I don't know. I don't want to imagine that turtle style. That was fun to watch once because of how nuts he went with it, but I definitely don't want to watch that turtle style all day. Welcome to Lone Eagle for game number three. Some of you know, I don't like this map when people destroy the bridges and it just turns into a big stalemate fest. So we might keep our finger on the fast forward key during this game, but let's see how it goes before we start fast forwarding. As the blue GLA demo coming back from that last game, can he do a bit better? This is Blues. His teammate as the green USA laser this is Castilian. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map, making up team number two, the Red China Infantry. This is Rogue Prophet, which, uh, you know, that's a pretty, pretty good name, pretty dramatic sounding name, but the best name in the game. This is the one, the only, Spiritual Mango. When you want your fruit, to also do something a little bit more for your life, he is your man. And if you don't like mangoes, what are you doing with your life? Mangoes are delicious. But that, but there we have it. It is a 2v2. It is a map that can get very stalematey. This middle section becomes the focus, and then it's just endless war of attrition, slamming heads against walls kind of stuff. He's a USA super weapon, by the way, if I didn't say that. Uh, but we'll see. Lone Eagle, uh, as much as I appreciate all of the work that goes into this mod, how much effort it takes to make maps that look good like this, Lone Eagle is a terrible map. It is a ter Oh, he's already killing the bridges. No! Don't do this to me, Blue! Don't do this to me, Blue. Three out of four... <laughs> four out of four bridges. All right, go and make a tea. Big thanks to Event Horizon, Jeffrey F, Jacob M, Fluffy Ninja Robotech, Merrick, and Fedon C. For supporting the channel over on Patreon. Uh, Humvees are here. The Humvees were waiting. Spiritual Mango says, not today, technicals. And that's a three for nothing. He didn't even lose one Humvee to that attack. That Humvee escaped by the skin of his teeth and truly... He needs to see a dermatologist because that is pretty much destroyed. But that was a three for nothing. You got to feel good about that. If that's a 1v1, you're feeling really good. And a 2v2 is like, okay, still a lot of craziness can't happen. China Infantry, Troop Crawler. We'll see. Black Tank is here for GLA Demo. USA Laser bringing some... Laser Rangers to the mix. Yeah, we've got a couple. Oil Derek's getting grabbed. Not so by our northern team. Even split for the southern team. And I think eventually Castilian will grab this Oil Derek. Okay, he's got an engineer on the way. All right, he's a little slow, but he's getting there. Uh, the four bridges have already been destroyed. Yeah, if you're going to make bridges, like, I don't know, on this map, it should probably be these are land bridges, and it should be, like, you know, from here to there. That's one big opening. And then you have these little these little pockets of water to break things up. 
Again, I love the aesthetics of this map. The frosty water, the little ice floating on top. Yeah, there's a skirmish going on. Who even cares? Laser Humvees are here against a couple of assault troop crawlers. Oh, and <laughs> those flak tanks just delete those minigunners. That was actually fast. I mean, minigunners are fearsome in their own right, but those flak tanks, that, like, you didn't have time to write home. That was just annihilation. Oh, we restored the bridge! Spiritual Mango! He restored the bridge! Hey, here we go! Harassment time, baby! We got a couple of tanks down. We got a couple of supply trucks eliminated, but that Stinger site is actually doing a pretty good job of holding its own. Uh, tow missile has been upgraded for these Humvees, so they do chew through those vehicles a bit more quickly. And it is a full-on harassment pass. Spiritual Mango also does have a spy doing overwatch on the top side of this expansion of the middle. But a couple of sentry drones are trying to sneak in. These are laser sentries. They're trying to punch in the front door. Spiritual Mango has his own harassment to worry about. He's got a couple of guardian tanks going to be responding to this threat. And his Humvees are still on the move in the northern half of the map. They're hunting for a couple more targets to kill. They found some undefended supply trucks. This is 50% of the income just getting eliminated here. He does have the oil derrick. He does have that expansion in between the bases. But Castilian's income just hit the floor, dropped it completely down to zero. And by completely down to zero, I mean not because he's got the oil derrick. But uh, I don't know where the other supply truck went, but that might actually be zero. He zeroed him out on supply trucks. That was a really successful attack by Spiritual Mango. Resets the bridge and then comes through, cleans up a couple of supply trucks, but the big kicker is how much he just nuked the economy of Castilian. Blues is producing a ton of flak tanks. Oh, radar van? Miss. Blues barely gets the radar van out in time. He knows what the deal is, and now he's, he's going to garrison up. Look at this. Double stinger sight? Yeah, double stinger sight coming out towards these bridges. He says, why would I want these bridges back online? I have to defend that area? I don't want to defend that area. So I'm going to throw down a couple of stinger sights anyways. Good number of minigunners are here. USA tanks going to be going directly against these flak tanks, and that is a perfect combination from these two guys. I love that attempt. Maybe it didn't totally work out, but I love the attempt by Spiritual Mango and Rogue Prophet to split the responsibility. The tanks go to the flak tanks. That's where they're strongest. And the infantry try and push forward the front line elsewhere. Fortunately, they weren't actually able to do anything, but it was at least an attempt. A couple of MiGs do come through. One MiG crashes down, but one Stinger Sight gets eliminated. And yeah, those flak tanks, my gosh, they just wipe away infantry. I mean, I realize that it's like an anti-infantry vehicle, but still, it just absolutely cuts down that infantry horde. And Blues has found a really solid unit combination. The flak tank against a China infantry, and then of course it takes down missile defenders as well, in combination with the rocket buggies. Once he gets AP ammo, he gets those upgrades rolling, he's going to be in a really good spot. Blues has tightened up his security, but Castilian it looks like has not. And he may be paying the price once again, his supply trucks getting cut down. Two of them get eliminated. He's still got a third over there. And the MiGs mostly escape. Maybe all four of them. All four of the MiGs manage to escape. Particle tank is here for Castilian. Lighthouse. Every single time that I stream, this guy shows up and the first thing he says, OMG, we miss you. <laughs> I've streamed three days in a row and every single day he's been like, OMG, we miss you. Laser tanks get powered down, but flak tanks do not. Flak tanks don't totally win against uh, tank hunters when they've got dragon tanks to absorb the shots. Arty Strike comes in, massive hit on the rocket buggies. That may be enough to break the front line. Let's see what the reinforcements are. A couple of Inferno Cannons are here. A couple of Guardian Tanks as well from Spiritual Mango trying to collapse in on the front line of this GLA player taken down. The power was the right move as the MiGs come through for another pass. Looking for, oh, they just go for the firebase. Ooh, that Laser Patriot gets the kill on both of the MiGs, and the frontline attack starts to collapse. 
not enough to actually break through the front door. Another laser, uh, another particle tank comes in. Particle Cannon is online for Spiritual Mango. Nuke online for Rogue Prophet. They have both deployed one super weapon each, and they at least have a bit of a start, a head start on their opponents in that department. That's fair. Lighthouse saying that he included, saying he misses Baby Bird as well. Well, that's very, that's very thoughtful. I had a FaceTime call with Baby Bird earlier, and uh, he, he said, he's like, hey, can I see the cat? He didn't say hi to me. He didn't say anything like that. He just said, can I see the cat? And he wanted to see the cat. And then he was like, can I see my bed? And he wanted to see his bed. So I walked into his room, and I showed him his bed. And then he's like, can I see the vacuum? <laughs> and so I had to go and show him the vacuum. He cared very little for seeing me. But he wanted to see the cat, and then his bed, and then the vacuum. And they were all still there, so he was pretty happy. He wanted to pet the cat, but hard to do that over FaceTime. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in, and it's going to be a one-for-one one as these guys cross map and go for the low power mode. Nicely done. Spiritual Mango was right on the edge of having enough electricity, and this has bought another couple of seconds until that particle cannon fires off. It's almost to one minute, but every moment that you can get, especially when you've got your own Scud Storm, eventually going to fire off, it's nice to have that additional time to prepare. Cat's getting targeted down. Ooh, just enough. That was the exact right amount of rockets. That uh, that literally could not have been e any more perfect. Rogue Prophet moving forward. The power is still offline. Oh wow, Spiritual Mango. He's actually, uh, he was in a bad spot. It just came online. He's upgrading, as you can see, an additional power plant. So you won't be able to knock him down with just one power plant. And those flax, oh my gosh, those flax just delete infantry. I guess I keep saying that, but it's, just, it's so fast. Rocket buggies are going to, well, just really do a touch of damage there. Not much at all. Second nuke online. Rogue Prophet says, I will not be outdone. Fuel air bombs, they're a little too slow. You got to play the dodge game when you've got the rocket buggies. Hit and run is often the name of the game with rocket buggies. Poking and prodding and then backing off. Uh, ooh, those stingers. Yeah, I was just having the same thought as the scan comes in. Those stingers have actually all been eliminated. Well, now they've truly all been eliminated. Fuel air bomb fires off there from the Alpha Auroras. Or I guess it's the regular Auroras. Uh, Spirit no, Spiritual Mango does have the Alphas. He's super weapon. All right, Particle Cannon is ready. Scout comes in. This would be a pretty juicy spot to use it if you don't have an answer for these Particle Tanks. It might be in the north. Rocket buggies reforming the front line. Most of the particle tanks have gone down. Three of them do survive. One minute 20 until the nuke. Two minutes 16 until the scud. Just waiting for the opportune moment, perhaps. Paradrop comes in. Second particle cannon online. If you use it now, you can time them up for the next pass. Auroras are going to have to get off the deck. You might actually end up nuking your own airfield by accident. Alpha Aurora's come through. Rangers are here. 45 seconds on the clock for the nuke. Rocket buggies, no firestorm though. The MiGs get cleaned up as they try to make a pass on the army. Rogue Prophet trying to find that China air superiority, but it doesn't always work. Really feel like you should use that particle cannon. He might be waiting for any kind of defensive moment. I 
I don't know, even either breaking this front line or hitting your opponent's economy. Spy drone gets called in, immediately removed. A-10 Warthog strike coming in. Oh wow, that second particle cannon is crazy far forward. I didn't realize how far forward he put it. Airfield goes down, particle cannon fires off, and it finds the front line as the nuke will find the back line. Three supply drop zones taken out, as well as some heavy damage done to the Scud Storm. 30 seconds until it ticks over. Would be nice to have a couple of Alpha Auroras to come in at that moment, but they've already been taken down on the deck, and it's going to be an all-out assault on the front line. Spiritual Mango and Rogue Prophet are going to try and break open the front door, and the Scud Storm is on pause. Low power mode for that GLA player. The front door hasn't been broken, but it's cracked as the rocket buggies come in to fill the void. Black tanks are stepping up as well. It's guardian tanks for the USA player from the south. But the tomahawks are what he's really hoping to keep alive. Meanwhile, Rogue Prophet trying to do as much as he can with as little as he's got. His entire army has fallen apart, and he's got only a couple of tank hunters left and they will be dealt with. No meaningful progress made by either side. Carpet Bomb coming in. Crusaders are the choice for this laser player. And well, a couple of Carpet Bombs do land. Assault Troop Crawlers are to the front line, but they just get removed. And Blues is still low power. That's Scud. How many uh, windmills does he need? I guess he needs three? Four? For whatever reason, he is super low power mode. He's adding a lot of additional windmills. Yeah, that is a crazy spot to put that particle cannon. But 30 seconds until it fires off, so we'll see if he actually makes it. Assault Troop Crawlers are here, but the Gat Cannon is going to help anchor this defense. Tank Hunters as well to burn down those last couple of tanks. Besides, he needs another Gat Cannon on the front line. All right, Scud is ready. Honestly, that Particle Cannon is close enough that it might uh, be worth going for. Scud fires off at the same time as the particle, and they do a bit of damage to each other, but you need one, more than one hit to take down a super weapon. Low power mode for Spiritual Mango once again. is uh, having a tough time keeping his electricity bill paid. The nuke lands in the north, Rogue Prophet. Does a bit of double duty with that nuke, hitting mostly the economy, but also some significant damage to the command center, and I think taking down some of the production as well. Anthrax Bomb is hoping to find the front line of Spiritual Mango. He's got a lot of tanks, and they are very close to that Anthrax. A-10 Warthog on top of it, but the Particle Cannon survives. The tanks do not, as many of those Avengers get eliminated. Rogue Prophet moves forward to the north. He eats through every single Crusader, and he's hoping to break into the into the War Factories, but it may not be enough. The first couple of bombs fall. One, two War Factories go down, and the Infantry Army will once again be eviscerated by the front line of blue. He's pressing further forward as a third nuke gets added into the arsenal of Rogue Prophet. I will break open your front door with my super weapons, if nothing else. The particle cannon still has not gone down. I thought it got eliminated for a second, but no, it is still there. Airfield also taking a bit of the damage from that, uh, from that anthrax bomb. 
Rebel Surprise in the back door. They take down one power plant. And, uh, well, they're going for a power plant and a supply drop zone at the same time. Low power for all three nukes, but not the particle cannons. Uh, that particle cannon, I think it'll be healed up in time before the before the next particle cannon fires off. We'll see. MiG's coming in. Yeah, that's a lot of anti-air right there on the front line. Oh, you think they should bunker crawl? Ah, uh, China bunker crawl up from the south and just make a wall and then just slowly leapfrog it forward. Okay. Critical meds thinking outside of the box. Implementing some, uh... That almost feels a little, uh... A little, uh... Command and Conquer remastered -y. Thinking about Soviets base crawling to your base with boy, uh, with ore silos and then dropping flame turrets in your base. Oh, a couple of random laser sentries sneak into the, the economic line of Rogue Prophet. Sneak attack tunnel as well on top of two of the nukes. This is mass flak, flak tank invading the nukes right before that one of them was ready to fire up. Nope, that's not the one at one minute. You got to go for the other one. You hope that it's one of these guys, and he gets it. But it's still not the nuke that has only 50 seconds left on the clock. Mass Inferno as this secret network gets burned down, truly burned to the ground. Spiritual Mango absorbs the attack coming in from the Laser General. And a couple of flak tanks do survive. Power plants getting targeted down. And Spiritual Mango will fire off his particle cannon. It's close. It's going to be close. He gets it. The Scud Storm goes down. Spiritual Mango, with his laser from the sky, shuts down his opponent's super weapon. Artie Strike comes in as well, takes down a couple of those supply drop zones. And this game has turned into pure chaos. I love this from Castilian. He repaired one of the bridges, it looks like, and he snuck across a decent number of sentry drones, and he has just been popping power plant after power plant after power plant. One of these guys even going heroic, and now he's going for supply trucks, he's going for the internet center, anything and everything that he can. Rogue Prophet, his front line has been broken. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in, doesn't find the power plant, not quite enough, but the rocket buggies are chipping away at the front line, and the nuke will find the windmill and the last war factory. The palace as well, he gets the palace and the war factory, so that's a big reset to the tech and the production of blue. Particle Cannon fires off in the north, he gets the Oil Derricks gets a supply truck as well. A-10 Warthog Strike will find an EMP on these. No, they're not actually going for that. They were going for something else, but the EMP freezing those rocket buggies and keeping them locked in place. Sentry drones still running around. These sentry drones from Castilian have been amazing, doing so much damage, so active, always avoiding a direct fight with overwhelming forces. And actually, they can 4v1 a Guardian tank, so they just overwhelm that Guardian tank and take it down. Might even earn a second heroic status. No, not yet. They gotta get a couple of more kills. Blues pressing the front line forward, always keeping pressure on Rogue Prophet, while Castilian and Rogue Prophet taps out! Castilian keeping up the assault. What a champ! Is this the fire sale? Spiritual Mango, is he planning on 1v2-ing? He's got two particle cannons and a nuke. They have almost removed blues from the game. These little sentry drones, they have just been going crazy this game. Two of them are heroic, the other two are double vet. Carpet Bomb lands on a big chunk of Guardian tanks. 
Oh, the airfield getting targeted down. Spiritual Mango, I think, is just QA moved. He is sending everything that he's got directly up the front door. But an Anthrax Bomb is going to find the middle of the map, right in the middle of the army. And Spiritual Mango's attempt to cross the map and counterattack has been cut off at the knees. Oh my gosh. Three out of the four have gone golden. <laughs> Castilian with his hero laser drones is just punching through 20 seconds until the next particle cannon fires off. I cannot believe how much damage these laser sentry drones have done. This is the last guy to go heroic. We're just waiting for him to finally get that promotion. Rocket buggies are trying to end that particle cannon before it has a chance to fire off. Look at that. They're all for heroic. They've all done it. Particle cannon will find the command center. Can he shut down the command center of Blue? He can. He gets the kill. Blue is going to have a tough time rebuilding. I think he still has... He has a palace. Uh... We'll see. EMP Patriots, they apparently have got nothing on these sentry drones. Ooh, this might actually send him into low power mode. We'll see. Spiritual Mango. No, he's still online. He's going to kill one of the sentry drones. Oh, the EMP locks both groups down now. Blues is trying to hold the front line still. Oh, he's got stealth buggies. He's got stealth raider buggies. Or not raider buggies. Uh. No, the first sentry drone goes down. The second sentry drone goes down. These brothers have seen everything together. And now there's only one. It's low power mode. They did it, though. They finally brought spiritual mango's power down. Took it offline. Rocket buggy sneaking forward. It's a 2v1, which is always a tough situation. Carpet Bomb finds one of the barracks. Does a big chunk of damage to the supply drop zone, but doesn't remove it. Three minutes on the clock, 13 seconds, and a minute 55 on the super weapons of Spiritual Mango. Oh, command center over there. It almost doesn't matter. Spiritual Mango, well fought, but Blue and Castilian may have had the winning ticket. It was apparently laser sentries this whole time. Particle Cannon is ready. Maybe goes for the economy. Maybe uses it on these laser sentries because they've been such a pain. Building goes down. A couple of tanks go down as well. I'm not sure what that actually was. Power plant as well. Does he take him offline? No. Okay. It wasn't. It's not low power mode. Uh, he must have. Oh, he's got. He's got power plants spread all over the place. This guy has upgraded power plants in every corner of his allies' base. Spiritual Mango once again in low power mode. Blue and Castilian. They have not been able to end it just yet. And somehow this particle cannon is still there. It has been there for so long. Basically, it's on the front line. And now it goes down. The low power mode is lifted. Castilian sends in a carpet bomb on top of Spiritual Mango. Or I guess a fuel air bomb, but it doesn't land. Critical Meds is cheering for Spiritual Mango in the 1v2. That would be pretty incredible. He does have a nuke about ready to go, so he could, if he catches an army with it, that could give him a big shot to punch through. These sentry drones have been so frustrating for Spiritual Mango to deal with. Carpet Bomb gets called in. Nuke is ready. Ooh, sneak attack on top of the nuke, but there it goes. And it'll find a black market. It'll find a palace, but not the power plant. 
The sneak attack takes it down, down to one particle cannon. The original particle cannon from minutes ago, from so, so long ago. Well fought, Spiritual Mango. Well fought. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to be able to turn this around. If he had been able to kill Blue, but Blue was so close to death and just, he survived. So he was able to rebuild. He's had so long to be able to rebuild this. Barra drop coming in? Yeah, dropping some troopers in the uh, in the back line. Hoping they'll do something. Oh, they're going to get a kill on a palace. Oh! That's actually... That's 2,500 credits down the drain. That's a decent amount of cash just gone. Man center. It'll take a big chunk, but not enough. And these laser century Jones just keep circling and circling and circling. Spiritual Mango is legitimately fighting this one out. He's actually going to take down the radar van. Uh, it's not a big win, but it is, you know, it's something. Every little bit helps or something like that. I don't know. I think if Blues just A-moved all of his flak tanks, he could probably take down the remaining Guardians and uh, kill everything else. Uh, a couple of reinforcing Guardian tanks. Three, four, five coming in. A-10 Warthog Strike. Does it hit the... No. Oh, he overshot it. Dang. If that A-10 Warthog Strike could, like, hit the whole army, but it doesn't. Guardians can't zap away those missiles. Anthrax on the reinforcements. And nothing. That bomber does not find its mark. Spiritual Mango has bounced back. He's lost his oil derricks, sure, a long time ago. He's had just enough supply drop zones, just enough supply stashes under his control. Uh, going for the secret super weapon, which is the Demo Rebels. Takes the power offline. Could go for these two power plants over here. No, just gets the particle cannon. I thought he didn't have enough Rebels to get a particle cannon. Carpet Bomb comes in. It finally lands. Taking Spiritual Mango further down a peg. And these I love that these rocket buggies are just, like, clearing out this town. There's a, there's a whole income economy just below that that they're ignoring. And they're like, hey, we got to take care of this. I'd probably just sell this off at this point. I think that, uh, that EMP Patriot is probably not doing much for you, Spiritual Mango. Well... He's technically still in this... I, I don't see... Without the super weapons, I don't see how he can come back from this. Although the fact that his opponents haven't built super weapons is pretty surprising. At least the USA Laser should have three particle cannons, I feel like, by this point. Unless... Oh, no, he's got a command center. He may not really have the income for it. Uh, but... I don't know. I feel like he could get a couple more uh, supply drop zones or get a couple more supply centers. Just kind of surprising he doesn't have any laser particle cannons. Oh my gosh. Spiritual Mango is rebuilding a particle cannon. He's adding on two more supply drop zones as well. He's trying to add on an, an additional laser patriot. Yeah, sell that one off. You at least get a little bit of cash back. Maybe you finish one of your other buildings that you're trying to start. Fuel air bomb. I don't know what that was. There was a worker there. Takes a big chunk out of the command center. Moab comes in on top of the command center and several supply drop zones as well. That was actually a pretty good shot. That was that was a killer. Carpet bomb on top of the command center, but not not so. I do like the uh, the spy drones over the water. Just keep an eye on that area. 
It's not like necessarily the best spot for your first spy drone. Carpet bomb on top of the barracks. Doesn't get the power plants. Not quite enough. A10. And a fuel air bomb on the new command center. 344 on the particle cannon. And another surprise attack. The sneak attack in the back. You always got to worry about that one. The sneak attack from the front, you don't have to worry about quite as much. All right. A10 Warthogs, still not enough to kill that command center. A couple of uh, Rangers and Missile Defenders going down. A couple more Missile Defenders, Laser Drones coming through. Ooh, Rebel Surprise doesn't actually take out the Internet Centers. At least not the ones on either side. Another command center gets rebuilt. Spiritual Mango always trying to bounce back. It does feel like he's sort of at his limit. Like the fact that he wasn't actually able to get that particle cannon to fire off. He does still have enough cash to keep fielding these Guardian tank armies. Another carpet bomb. Oh, goodness. That's so little health. Another black market. That was probably two black markets. Or maybe a black market and a stinger site, something like that. Rocket buggies find a couple of guardian tanks. Wow, these carpet bombs, they are they're landing, but they're still missing. They're hitting and they're missing all at the same time. Ooh, heroic rocket buggy. Two heroic rocket buggies at least. Maybe three? Yeah, three heroic rocket buggies. Look at that. Laser drones coming in. Anthrax. Oh, on top of the infantry. All right. I think now... Oh, he's still not, he's still not calling it quits. They really need... To do something better about these buildings. They, these buildings are causing them some real problems. Uh, oh, laser sentry drones don't take any damage from anthrax. No humans involved, so anthrax is not a problem for my robot lungs. That's kind of a neat little uh, little feature. I assume that's a feature, not a bug. Hey, command center goes down. Blue is reforming his whole front line over to the east. Oh, he para-dropped. He's going for it. His entire base is about to be destroyed, and he para-drops five rangers onto the other side of the map. I mean, you got to appreciate, you know, all of the lighting touches, everything that's going on here. One militant comes in. Wow. Oh, he's going for the the uh, honorable discharge play. We know that with, with Tangus. Oh, the tunnel network. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Anyways, Spiritual Mango is getting torn apart on the other side of the map. Another carpet bomb, another Moab comes in. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's a bit of a blue on blue. Or I guess green on blue. But a bit of friendly fire coming in there from Castilian. He was trying to carpet bomb some buildings, but by that point, the buildings had already been destroyed. Am I watching CSGO right now? Yeah, sometimes it seems that way. Ugh, that was... Oh my gosh, holy... 40 minutes? That game felt like it should have been 20 minutes. Ooh, that will, these are long ones. Two and a half hours. This might be our last one. But let's jump into the next one. Welcome 
to the darkness, to the void, to the blackness. This is the Tiberian Sun anniversary. That is a giant Nod logo in the middle of this map. This is the Tiberian Sun 22nd anniversary map. I believe this was made by Sigoro. He has a video on his channel showcasing this map. It has a bunch of cool little details and textural elements to it. You get Tiberium fields on this map, but of course you do have the regular supply docks. But let's go ahead and tick, kick off this 2v2v2. This is the USA Laser is Kittybot. Their teammate as the... Oh, okay, let's turn on the minimap. It's up here. Blue... This is, as the Vanilla China, Cloud. Then swinging around the, the clock face, the one o'clock position we have as the Rust Stealth General Spam Alt F4. His teammate as the purple GLA Vanilla, this is Giraffe Cobb. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map as the USA Laser, this is Cadian K36. I keep wanting to call him Canadian, but it's Cadian. Uh, and rounding it out as the Red USA, this is Spiritual Mango. So as you can guys see on the mini-map, the Nod logo is very present in this map. As I said, it is a... Uh, game 4. It is a uh, homage. It is a honorary map for the Tiberian Sun 22nd anniversary which was a couple of months ago now from the time of recording. Sigoro sent over this replay and uh, as like a showcase of this map. Although he's not actually in this game unless he's smurfing. Maybe he's Kittybot, but I don't think so. Uh, he normally just plays it himself, so. Everybody else in this name, well, I guess he's Kittybot or Kadian, but everybody else in this game I recognize. Uh, a little bit of technical harass coming in here from Giraffe Cobb. Going to be poking and prodding at... Cadian, he's uh, hoping to do a bit more damage than just one supply truck, but that might be all he gets. One supply truck and not much more for four or five technicals committed to this attack. Humvees are swinging around and they will get the kill. So as you can see, it is a 2v2v2. You've got these bridges which connect you through these ramps to your opponents, and then you also can traverse the middle of the map. There are some expansions here, and we do have a tunnel network coming in as well. And then there are some oil derricks as well on the high ground. So you've got some oil derricks in between the bases, and then you have some oil derricks placed elsewhere on the map also. Bridges, I think, are indestructible. So there is very much a high ground, low ground kind of component to this game. And things are getting a little bit crazy right from the beginning. Giraffe Cobb has angered Kadian, and he is hoping that he can take the fight to Giraffe Cobb, but it is going to take all of these technicals to kill off these Laser Humvees. Are the Laser Humvees going to win this fight, though? He might actually win this fight. It's two technicals. All right, the reinforcements are going to seal the deal. Oh, I actually split the damage across the technicals, so that technical did actually survive. Three more Laser Humvees going to be coming in. And all the way from the north side of the map, Spam Alt F4 comes in to the south side of the map at the high ground expansion. He says, this is mine. I am taking it over. But Spiritual Mango says, I have something to say about that. I am not going to let you just take that expansion. Kittybot presses forward. Good number of Laser Crusaders out on the map. Cloud has taken a high ground expansion for himself as well. Bunker and a Gatling Cannon, as well as a bunch of Gat Tanks moving out to secure his place on the high ground. He wants a piece of that scorpion tail, and he is going to take it for himself. Spiritual Mango gets defeated. The laser crusade or the crusaders were not enough to overwhelm those quads. Technicals coming forward. They're gonna find the power plants. I mean, he's a USA laser. Oh, it's enough! It barely is. It takes him offline. Mass fire sale. That might be a quit out. Kadian might be our first defeat. And that is it. Spiritual Mango is left on his own once again. This guy fought so hard in the last match. Just never giving up. And now he's suddenly in a 1v2v2. 
he's going to have to fight back. Honestly, he's in a pretty solid spot. He's got the two oil derricks. He's got his little section of the map. If everybody leaves him alone, he'll be fine. But uh, if Giraffe Cobb just keeps pressing in, then he might just crumble to the pressure. He's got Kitty Bot on one side. He's got Giraffe Cobb on the other side. But Cloud might actually be creating a little bit of space for Spiritual Mango to recover. Uh, okay, Giraffe Cobb is not actually pulling any of these forces back. He's just sending in fresh reinforcements right to the front line. Cloud is doing the thing where he uh, presses in on multiple fronts at once. Mass Crush comes in. Gats clear out a big chunk of those RPG troopers, but there's only three Gats left, and they're actually just going to die. Yeah, those RPG troopers. Okay, no, finally he does reacquire the targets. Clears out the RPG troopers. Gats don't kill buildings very quickly, as you can see. So they're kind of in a stuck position there. Spiritual Mango has at least uh, reformed his front line. He's got some reinforcements there. He's got some tanks. Giraffe Cobb is not pressing in just yet. I feel like killing off these oil derricks would be relatively easy for Giraffe Cobb to do a bit of damage to Spiritual Mango. But at the same time, Giraffe Cobb, of course, is trying to deal with this attack from Cloud. Now, this game is a little bit old. So you do have to keep in mind these people probably hadn't seen as many matches from Cloud, but we know, as as people from the future, we know that Cloud is the big hitter in this match. He is consistently the best 1v1-er in Gen Evo, and in team games, he almost always outperforms everyone else. And even when he doesn't win the game, he plays so well that he wins the comments, and everybody in the comments is like, oh, Cloud, he may have lost, but he won in our hearts. So these guys may be thinking, uh-oh, we got to take care of Cloud. Or they may be thinking, I've never heard of this Cloud guy. I bet he's not very good. And if so, they might be in for a rude awakening. We'll see. Cloud can be defeated, and this may be one of those instances Spiritual Mango, he's just hanging out by himself. He's getting his supply drop zones up. He's adding two of them on at the same time. And he is going to try and hold out as long as he can. Fortunately, he got these two Armadillo outposts, so he can expand here. I guess he's just adding Patriot missiles. Uh, I was kind of thinking he would at least have them as a bit of defense on the right side in case Giraffe Cobb tries to attack him. But Giraffe Cobb has other things to worry about. A whole lot of Gats trying to bust open his high ground expansion. Not enough RPG troopers. Just not quite enough. And this time, when you've got five or six Gats plus a bunch of tank hunters behind them, you can actually take down buildings relatively quickly. Although, of course, the uh, tank hunters are going to do a bit better of a job at that. Spiritual Mango, even with the little bit of a uh, little bit of vision inside of the tank. Manticores back onto the front line. Hey, GLA Stealth, they get some things as well. We've seen some of the new units from Gen Evo over the course of the day, and this is another one of the new ones, the Manticore ADC. Ton of them coming in here. Cloud is going to have to worry about that, but Giraffe Cobb is trying to cut through, and he realizes, oh, Spiritual Mango has actually grown quite big, but at the same time, Kittybot is also going to be moving out, so Spiritual Mango might be getting sandwiched once again. It felt like a lot of that happened last game. Cloud, with a whole bunch of ECMs, is hoping these Inferno Cannons can actually clear out the Manticores, and that MiG did absolutely nothing as quad reinforcements, I think, are just going to chew through these tank hunters. A couple of quads may go down to the, to the tank hunters, but ultimately the quads do clear out that whole crowd. And Spiritual Mango, he is going to have to make this defense work. Fortunately, Giraffe Cobb has pretty much fallen to pieces, so Spiritual Mango isn't really fighting two battles at once. He is just fighting one battle. It's Mammoth Tanks against an A-10 Warthog strike from both sides. The War Factory survives, and Spiritual Mango lives to fight another day. Crusaders versus Laser Crusaders, but there are Mammoths here for the USA player as well. Tomahawks versus Laser Particle Tanks. As, uh, what is this random? Yeah, one random RPG trooper from Giraffe Cop still just hanging out in the back. 
of Spiritual Mango's base. Kittybot has not managed to break open the front door. It's going to take another attempt to bring Spiritual Mango to his knees. If you want to peel this fruit, you're going to have to try a lot harder than that. That's what Spiritual Mango said. I'm sure he has one-liners like that while he's played the game. Actually, I think this was back when he was Spiritu Magno. So, he's now Spiritual Mango, which is why I'm calling him Spiritual Mango. But, ah, Giraffe Cobb says, Cloud, you are not invincible, but Migs will find massive shots. Those actually aren't Migs. Those are, what are Iron Dragons or something? Yeah, what are they called? Iron Dragons, okay. I got it right. Giraffe Cobb is looking for revenge. He says, you took out my economy. I will take down your economy. And Cloud, as good as he is, he's not necessarily able to 1v2, which is what he is doing. He is fighting both Giraffe Cobb and Spam Alt F4 at the same time. Giraffe Cobb going down in the bottom left. He is not able to keep up the assault against Spiritual Mango. And, well... Looks like the Helix might be the answer when your opponent has a bunch of tanks. What do you do? Oh, he loses the command center. That's annoying for, for Cloud, but it's not the end of the world. And as long as he's still got the economy up there, then he's still going to be pretty happy with his situation. Raptor's coming by with a pass. At the same time, Cloud, he's got the Inferno cannons. He knows... One way to break open the front door is with artillery. Three minutes, 40 seconds on the scud clock. And Spiritual and Cloud has made safe his expansion once again. So he is moving out now against Spam Alt F4. He says, you've had two swings. It's time for me to hit back. And, and Cloud maybe is going to hit a little bit harder than Spam Alt F4 was. Mind drop on top of the worker trucks as they are hoping to just do their regular job. And the reinforcements are going to eat up some of those mines as well. Giraffe Cobb maybe did not realize that those mines were there as he drives his units into them. Inferno cannons creating firestorms that are just cutting through these reinforcements. And Iron Dragons as well burning down the base of Spam Alt F4. The fire weapon of cloud is not a cloud that you want to hang out in battle buses are nice and it does look like kitty bot is having a difficult time breaking into spiritual mango's base on the other side of the map he's like hey i can also fight on two fronts at once but spiritual mango is a tough nut to crack that guy's defense <laughs> that guy just never gives up he, he doesn't really quit out of games and he fights until the bitter end sometimes to his advantage and sometimes to his detriment. Spam Alt F4, well, he's not totally broken yet, but it's going to take the saving grace of Giraffe Cobb to keep Spam Alt F4 in this game. Low power mode, so these Scud Storms are no longer quite the risk that they were a few moments ago. And the Inferno Cannons are building a blaze that it is going to be difficult to walk through. These quad cannons can try to assault the army of Cloud, but they're going to have a tough time doing it. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in for Spiritual Mango, but it's going to be answered by an A-10 Warthog Strike from Kitty Bot. The hits are against the late game economy, that secondary cash flow, and that might be it. Spam Alt F4 sells off pretty much everything. He does have an additional windmill coming in, so I guess he's still in this game but maybe not for long. It might be down to a 1v1v2. Giraffe Cobb needs an answer to the army of Cloud. Uh, how is he in this game? How is Spam Alt F4 still in this game? I don't know what he's got going on, but he's got something still here. Particle tanks from Kitty Bot. Okay, Spam Alt F4 has been defeated. Giraffe Cobb versus Spiritual Mango versus Cloud and Kitty Bot together. And well, he had some good hits against Cloud, but uh, Cloud still has a pretty significant macro side of things behind this army. 
Oh, and he's actually bringing a listening outpost. He's got a war factory. He's got expansions coming up. Iron dragons and helixes are his reinforcements. So if you stop the Inferno cannons, you still have the Air Armada to worry about. Giraffe Cobb had an impressive run, killing Cadian K-36 right at the beginning of the game. But it looks like that run may be coming to an end. Uh, that's a lot of RPG troopers. He might be able to cut through these helixes. We'll see. The helixes do have lovely miniguns on the front of them that help them deal with those infantry types. But Giddybot has two particle cannons uh, three minutes away, so we shall see. MIG Strike comes in on top of the War Factory, takes it down. Some of the reinforcements as well. Giraffe Cobb does not need any interruptions to his macro. And yet, there it is. Meanwhile, Spiritual Mango has busted out of his base. He was getting contained by Kittybot, but a one-two punch from Spiritual Mango, some kind of support power to clean up the reinforcements, and then his tanks killed the rest of Kittybot's army. But he is not going to be brave enough to actually assault Kittybot's base. He might need uh, more tomahawks or something to actually be able to safely take down those laser patriots. Otherwise, he is going to use a lot of tanks trying to come down this hill. He might still be able to do it. I don't know. It's going to be a tough fight either way. Crusaders might have enough numbers. That last Laser Patriot, if it was online, this fight would be a lot easier for Kitty Bot. The Laser Particle Tank also popping off Crusaders one by one, but it's going to be the Carpet Bomb coming in. No, the Moab just behind the army. And oh, Spiritual Mango, he just barely gets blasted to bits. I think it's going to be a wash, but only barely for the Mango. No, he actually gets the Heroic Crusader, that Heroic Laser Crusader. He gets the kill on it. His reinforcements get cut down by the support power, but uh, he's forced to back off anyways. Uh, Spiritual Mango, you had a good run. Oh, he actually, I completely missed. He's taken over the expansion of his, his well, the main base of his ally. Cadian is gone, and Spiritual Mango just set up shop there. Meanwhile, Cloud has not stopped the pressure. Slowly but surely, an unrelenting force. That is what Cloud is in this game. Pressing ever onward. Helixes, Gats, Inferno Cannons, Iron Dragons, and Giraffe Cobb sells off. The fire sale comes through to signal the end of this beautiful, majestic beast. The giraffe will have to stretch out its neck another day to reach another branch. Actually, I heard that giraffes actually mostly eat grass. Like, they do eat leaves from trees or whatever, but they also just eat a lot of grass. Uh, if that is true, that's kind of funny because we always think of drafts. Oh! As, uh, you know, reaching up high. And again, apparently they do that, but also apparently they just eat a bunch of grass. I guess water's down low, so they have to dip down for the water anyways. All right, Spiritual Mango is going to try once again. Unfortunately, 20 seconds until dual particle cannons fire off and then three minutes until the next one. And these particle cannons, oh man, Iron Dragons, this just isn't fair. Like, you have to hand it to Spiritual Mango. He's been in a 1v2, and he has held his own in the 1v1 against Kitty Bot. He has legitimately held his own, despite the fact that he got slapped right at the beginning of the game. But now it's a 1v2, and uh, yeah, these particle cannons, some of them are really far back. So, Spiritual Mango. He's trying to sell off the buildings as the particle cannon gets there. Loses his strategy center. Command center takes a bit of burn damage. Oh, I guess Spam Alt F4 is the one who had this expansion, but now that expansion is uh, pretty up for grabs. Cloud, I guess, could build 
an infinite number of internet centers. He's already got a couple, but he could, you know, pull a little bit of a Kyle and just build internet centers up there. I love that he sold off that war factory that was there. Massive bomb goes off there. I think that was a Moab landing. But I love that he sold off the war factory because he's like, why would I need that war factory there? I actually need the war factory somewhere else now because of the person I'm assaulting now. Mig Strike comes in. Firestorm on top of the supply center. That's a goodbye to the supply center. And a EMP on top of the tanks. Insult to injury if things weren't bad enough for Spiritual Mango. They're even worse when your units are out of power, just literally sitting ducks waiting for the guns of their opponents to be lowered and aimed at them. Spiritual Mango, you've had a good run. Oh, he is going to fight until the end, isn't he? Oh my gosh, Iron Dragons come in on top of the oil derricks, on top of the buildings. Nothing will be left from the flames of Cloud. So many ECMs as well. I mean, that's, that's a lot of ECMs. Probably more ECMs than he realistically needs. I think he has one ECM for every single unit that remains in Cloud's arsenal. Uh, Spiritual Mango had a good run, and despite all of... Uh, maybe sell off, like, half of these uh, Patriots, just so that you can get a bit of extra cash, get your power back online, all of that. He's about to lose two more upgraded power plants as well. So... Yeah, Spiritual Mango is going to be low power mode for a very long time. Oh, he actually is selling them all off. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's two and a half grand right there. Probably another two and a half grand right there. That's probably five grand that he just got back from selling off all of those Patriots. And yeah, his electricity is back online. And, well, when you got three, four, oh, four heroic helixes, two double vet helixes. There's only six helixes on the map. And four of them are heroic. The remaining two are about to go heroic. This is truly overwhelming. Unhinged once again. Big thanks to Event Horizon, Jeffrey F, Jacob M, Fluffy Ninja, Robotech, uh, Interface, Tech Doc, Adam Zay, Breath of Fire, Shanrocks, Liliar, Mark Kuro for supporting the channel over on Patreon and everyone who doesn't support the channel on Patreon. Glad that you guys also enjoy Command and Conquer all of these years later. Massive particle cannon to finish out the game. He's still building Crusaders. That Crusader just came out of trade. He's like, oh my gosh, the laser from the sky. By the way, big thanks to Zenead, Boyko, K, Caffeine, Candice D, Chris T, Squatlock, Tuning Fork, Whimsius, Tomcat, Boris, Monty C, R, Chefanoff and Squish as well for supporting the channel over on Patreon. And that will do it for game number four of this subscriber replay showcase. A massive 2v2v2 on the very cool Tibson 22 year anniversary map, which actually I think is called Nod Valves is the actual name of the map that Sigoro gave it, but there we go. Uh, 4 minutes 57 seconds. Unfortunately for Kadian, he just got slapped by Giraffe Cobb. And the rest of these guys, 23 minutes. What well, That is how long the game was. That was I feel like that was a well-paced game. Cloud sort of got rolling, and then once Cloud got rolling, that was kind of the end of it. This next game is, is like an all-stars from people we've been seeing today. Welcome back to DEFCON 6. The last time we saw this map, it was a three-player FFA brawl. But this time, it's a 3v3 as the China tank. This is Castilian making a comeback from one of the earlier matches in the day. As the Red USA Laser, this is Abalashik, which is a name I will struggle to pronounce. Uh, and this is the game I've been dreading because as the blue GLA talks, we have blue also returning from an earlier couple of matches. Meanwhile, on the exact opposite side of the map, 
playing as the purple China or USA laser. This is Kittybot making a return from that last game. In the top left-hand corner, also playing blue. Yeah, get ready for this. This, the China infantry, is Cloud. And rounding out team number two, hopefully he will last a little bit longer than he did in that last game as the China tank. Playing orange, this is Kadian K36. Game number five has two blue players. Now, fortunately, one is China and one is GLA, so we at least have that advantage for ourselves. They're two very different factions. Two pretty visually distinct factions. Gats and quads really look nothing like each other. Early defense here from Kadian is chewing through those technicals. Oh, one technical survived. Hopefully he deals with it relatively quickly. Oh, yeah, Cabal90 in the chat says hopefully they don't steal each other's structures. Yeah, if they engineer... Oh, uh, someone was asking what the Taskmaster looks like. That's what it looks like when it's destroyed. I guess we'll probably get to see another one at some point. Uh, yeah, if, if the two blue players steal each other's structures and then we have light blue China and dark blue GLA, that's where, that's where we just throw our hands up and say, nah, nobody gets to say anything in this game. We're just going to silently watch because it's going to be too confusing who's doing what. Kittybot sends over a laser tank just to help out Kadian. And before things get too crazy, big thanks to Colton B, Leon W, Umer Q, Yannick, PMR, Al J, Jacob R, Michael H, Jai Chang H, Harong H, and Blazon Ace for their contributions over on Patreon. Whoopsie, that Raptor made a bit of a mistake. It's uh, always unfortunate when you fly your aircraft over those gats or quads because they just light them up and you have about a quarter of a second to respond before it's too late. Although MiGs find their mark, double technical goes down. It's blue on blue, but in this case, we don't actually mean friendly fire. We mean two players who are both playing blue in the same game. A couple of gats, they are wasting their time fighting this tunnel network. So there is enough time for Blues to respond, but also Abalashik comes in with five laser Humvees to save Blues. Battlemaster Mark II, which looks pretty similar to the Taskmaster, well, somewhat similar to the Taskmaster that the Infantry General has. Aha, there is the Taskmaster in all of its glory. They have kind of similar roundy shapes. I guess the, the turret on the Battlemaster is much, much bigger. I don't know. They're kind of like roundy squares. Which is a weird thing to say. Bunch of cats coming in here from Castilian. Going to be able to force away those reinforcements. The middle of the map in some previous instances of DEFCON 6 has been the deciding force. Although that is a massive firestorm on all of those gats. Cloud completely cleans up Castilian's gat army that was in the middle of the map. Now Castilian has largely taken over three of the expansions in the middle of the map. And if he is able to hold on to this foothold, he is going to, if he's able to maintain this foothold, perhaps, he is going to be able to have a huge economic advantage in this game and also a huge strategic advantage. Blues comes in. Kadian is here with the Battlemaster Mark II, and he is going to shut down those quads. But that is not the end of the fight. In the middle, it's too many tanks. Abalashek has made the classic laser general mistake of too many units. Somebody called in a arty strike, and it's on the supply center as the Iron Dragons drop their bombs on that gat. The supply center takes a bit of damage, and Cloud moves down into the middle of the map. By the way, it is uh, bottom left-hand corner versus top right-hand corner. So it kind of does split the map in a slightly unusual way. We're used to seeing north versus south or east versus west. This is a little bit of a split. So hopefully it is clear enough to uh, keep track of those. 
Tanks come into the middle of the map. Reinforcements coming in from the northern-ish team. And Cloud does manage to clean up some of that building area, but not all of it. His tank hunters are going to be pushed away by the Gat firepower of Castilian. And Blue makes a second strike against Cadian. His uh, tanks are going to be cut down by the RPG troopers of Blue. He's got those Toxin rockets. And, well, Abalashik is the first one to add a super weapon into the mix. Rocket buggies are here. Those tanks will get destroyed the last couple of tanks, but the reinforcements are ever on the horizon. Taskmasters with mini gunners, with tank hunters, and oh, the one thing vertical tanks aren't necessarily good at is eliminating a bunch of small targets quickly. Patriot laser trying to come in. Once it, oh, the MIGs just get lit up as they try and escape. Raptors coming in for their own pass but it's gonna be Gats and a laser tank that come in to kill off Cloud's reinforcements. Cloud will not be able to keep up the assault. Kittybot moves down onto the low ground. Going to be able to clean up one more of these supply centers. Blue comes in with a second wave or a fourth wave, 400th wave maybe. Particle tanks, one of them. Oh, actually, these raptors, finally! The raptors find their mark. Kill off one of the particle tanks, but not the other. Cloud has actually set up an expansion in the middle. He's adding on a bunker. He's maybe going to even add on a war factory in the middle of the map as well. For now, it's just a supply center or two and a fortified bunker, which will help him hold this position. Particle tanks are here. Cloud has added on a nuke as well. Toxin Tunnel is deleting a lot of the infantry. Oh, Katie and your China tank, so I guess just stick with the tanks. The Toxin Tunnel won't be as big of a problem. Rocket Buggies come in from blue to help push this away once again. It is a tug of war, a back and forth. Very little headway, very little progress made by either team. Particle Cannon is one minute away but one particle cannon is not going to change the face of this game. Artie Strike fires off somewhere on the map. Gets all four particle tanks and a sentry drone as well. That was actually a pretty decent uh, Artie Strike for early game. That was a, that was a decent amount of value. Mine drop comes in. Everyone loves mining these ramps. It is so hard to break up the ramps on this map. Bunker doesn't get busted. A couple of laser tanks take the brunt of that damage. Bunkers haven't been garrisoned by everyone. Castilian has his. Blue has his. Cloud has his. But the other three players haven't yet garrisoned their own bunkers at their front door. If your opponent does garrison their bunker, you really have to uh, crack that before you step into their base. Otherwise, you'll just take so much damage from those units. Particle Cannon is ready. Might be used on the army. Laser tanks chewing up the Laser Crusaders as they try and make their way to the front line. And this is a case where that artillery advantage can be massive, but those MiGs find a huge amount of damage and Cloud's army gets lit up. Truly illuminating that flame from the sky. And only one particle cannon, well, it can do something, but it won't end the game. Another already strike fires off, probably a return fire coming in from Castilian maybe. Oh, no, that was actually from uh, someone on the southern team. Finds a uh, war factory to do a bit of damage to. And Cloud won't be able to break up this ramp just yet. Well, I guess that bunker is just attacking minigunners. That's not actually doing very much damage. 
Reinforcements coming in from Abolashik. And, well, Abolashik will kind of defeat the last remnants of Cloud's initial army. But the end is not nigh. Laser Particle Cannon comes online. Scudstorm comes online. They're both low power, but they are at least here on the map. Three minutes until nuke, until the cloud gets birthed by the cloud. Cloud is going to be living up to his name. We'll see how much he likes mushrooms or not. Oopsie daisy. One of the problems about having that particle cannon is just uses so much darn electricity. Critical Meds is loving the laser weapons, and I agree, the particle tanks are a lot of fun to watch. Mass Rocket Buggy comes in here from blue. He's just chipping away at this army. He's actually getting... Oh! Okay, no. I thought that was going to be a firestorm right in the middle of all of those rocket buggies. But okay. He kind of just bounces out. He says, uh, you know, I'll dodge it. No need for a big old firestorm now. Cloud tried to take up residence in the middle of the map, but that's a dangerous place for anyone to live. Raptor comes crashing down. Rocket buggies get caught. Ooh, a bunch of them get popped, and there are only about six left now. Probably six have already just just went down in the last couple of seconds. That Battlemaster is very glad to be alive. Giddybot versus Abalashik. Who is the better laser commander? Well, in this instance, it seems to be Kittybot who rolls over the tank shells of Abalashik. But it's going to be Gats and Battlemaster Mark II's coming in. Mind Drop gets deployed, but that is not going to be much of a deterrent. Most of the units split away from it. Abalashik is coming in for a second round of tanks, or maybe it's just one more laser paladin since the other ones have died by now. Kittybot presses forward. Another arty strike gets called in less than a minute until the next particle cannon and until the next nuke. Arty strike on the airfield of Cloud. A-10 Warthog. Makes its mark as well. Particle tanks are going to crack the bunker. Rocket buggies are going to hit back. Bunker stands, but not quite long enough. The arty strike comes in right at the end there and cleans it up. Particle cannon is ready. 20 seconds until the nuke. I don't know, Particle Cannon on the army or on this fortified area that Cloud has. Maybe on this low ground fortified area that Cloud has. Warthogs come in. At least you get the oil, Derek's. Radical Cannon has not fired off just yet. That was a pretty quick firing nuke from... Well. Cloud used to have a whole Inferno army on that low ground. Doesn't break the bunker, though. Barely doesn't break the bunker. And, well, that's Cloud's attempt. Microwave tanks being mixed in here. Abalashik going for a little of this, a little for that. Kadian has added his nuke into the mix. Almost everybody has one. Castilian is the only one abstaining. He says, not yet. I'll get one eventually. But he just lost his oil derricks. Lost maybe uh, some internet centers as well. That might have been an arty strike as well landing. Ooh, double particle cannon comes in from uh, Kittybot. The team in the south is starting to win the race of 
Well, not if that nuke never comes online. But they're starting to win the race of super weapons. Carpet bomb. Lights up one war factory. Doesn't take down the second one. But those reinforcements will be slowed a bit. Cloud and Kittybot once again coming together to mount a dual assault to try and break that attacking line. Anthrax bomb on top of the war factories. I love this. Triple war factory. But it's all getting anthraxed at the same time. And Cloud, you better watch your back because Castilian is here to come into your base. Will he actually be able to get anything done, though? It looks like he maybe brought down a war factory. Carpet Bomb comes in on top of that, though. Maybe a barracks goes down, and Castilian gets one internet center, maybe a second, but he's just getting carved up a bit too much. Ah, uh, the airfield, that's what it was. Cleans up Cloud's airfield, which, to be fair, that is a very valuable target to find. Cloud's air units are usually pretty active. But the assault has restarted. Cloud has those Inferno cannons. He's almost always poking and prodding with them. The Scud is ready to go from blue. Moab lands. Scud fires off. He's found the oil field and the power plant field. Look at that. That's a huge low power reset for the 4 minute 36 second nuclear Hadian. Mind drop? Mind drop. And right as Kittybot goes offline, that power can't last forever. The Warthog Strike is called in at just the right moment. Those particle tanks blasting through the remaining forces, and the defense is too good. Carpet Bomb gets called in as Cloud brings in the MiGs as well. Firestorm does ignite but it's a little late to the party. Is this another mind drop? Yeah, another mind drop right in the middle of the base. Artie Strike fires off. Cloud hasn't totally rebuilt his defenses. Artie Strike and the Carpet Bomb get the War Factory and the Barracks. But... Cadian has stepped down onto the low ground. He says, I don't think you should have that expansion. Blue is going to have to fight back. Abalashic is ready to move forward. Artie Strike finds the first hit, and the second will be the particle cannon. Sneak attack as well. MiGs come in to help finish the job. That is overkill. Unfortunately for our team in the south, they did not coordinate that very well. Cloud is coming in just to help clean anything else up. Castilian has been pushed out of his main base, and he has just got little bits and bobs elsewhere on the map. He's down on the low ground. He is in Abalashek's main base. And once again, Kadian gets pushed back. Those ECMs dodging some of those missiles, but it's, it's a few too many missiles to be completely dodged. All right, Abalashic, where are you going to use that particle cannon? He says, I'm going to wait. Kittybot also has a particle cannon ready to use. He might want to burn up this. Well, he's going to go for the command center. It's a curious choice. Those tanks, I feel like, would be the much better option. I'm not sure what the plan was there. Like, surely he knows that's not enough. Ah, MIG strike on top of the oil derricks. Very nicely done, but Kittybot now has a third particle cannon getting added into the mix. Rocket buggies poking and prodding, chipping away, always chipping away at the army of his opponent. You have to hand it to Blue. He has been very active with his rocket buggies in multiple games. Is just hoping always to hit and run. And he's going stealth again. He's got that stealth power. Abalashic, use it or lose it. 
20 seconds until Cloud's new carpet bomb comes in. Laser Comanches, well, this is one way to deal with your tank opponent, and it's low power mode as well. One too many. Five seconds on the clock. That nuke is hoping it can find a big, juicy target. That's a lot of tanks to potentially knock out in one go. Those Laser Comanches getting huge damage done. Whoever knocked out that that power just resulted in a carpet bomb on top of that tank army. That is a lot of power plants that just got annihilated. This army is not coming online for a long, long time. Abalashic was the last hope of Castilian, but now Castilian has left the game and these tanks are offline. Five minutes and 47 seconds on the two Scud Storms of Blue. Ooh, that is a wonderful Anthrax bomb spot, but it's perhaps a little too late. Cloud's Taskmasters are already on the high ground. Well, the Raptors kind of get off the deck. Not entirely. Oh, Fuel Air Bomb. That catches most of them. How long were those timers? It kind of doesn't matter because they are frozen in place. The team in the south is coming for the remaining members of the team in the north. The GG gets called. Abalashic calls it quits. And there is going to be the fire sale as well. GG indeed. A massive 3v3 on DEFCON 6. Some really good team play, some really good coordination between all of the folks, but once again, those super weapons are a huge indicator of the direction of the game. Not always, not always, but a huge indicator, and they did a ton of damage in that match. F-D-S-J-K-U-F-H-W. I just spelled someone's name in this match. Ugh. All right, let's let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> the sound of that spy drone spawning in was like a, I don't know, like a blender going off or something. Anyways, welcome back to DEFCON 6. We have got two 3v3s in a row. On the north side, as the pink GLA vanilla, this is is Aqualex 84. We'll go to the left. Their teammate over here to the left. Oops, there we go. That's the GLA Tox. This is... Uh, yeah. I'm going to call him the green GLA Tox. Uh, Critical Meds in the chat suggested I just call him the green Toxin player. So, like, that's fine. When you guys see his name, you also will be like, hey, I don't know how to pronounce that. Playing as the blue GLA Toxin, this is Cloud. Always happy to see a game with Cloud in it. If he wins, it's good play. If he loses, it's good play. And he usually does something spectacular anyways. So it's always fun to see that guy win or lose. On the south side, making up team number two. This, as the USA laser, is Tank Guy. Hopefully we see lots of laser tanks from him. As the USA air, this is Giraffe Cobb. Making a comeback into this game as well. Playing purple again. And as the Orange China Infantry, this is Sherp. I guess if I wanted to say it correctly, I would say this is, this is Sherp. Because in-game, his name is actually this is Sherp. But I think that's fine. Yeah, check out that guy's name. Green Talks. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that. Although, if anyone does have a legitimate... Uh, idea on how to pronounce that. Sherp with the China Infantry Bunker right at the front busts two of the technicals immediately, but that is not actually enough because there are four technicals and one of them almost got busted. It was inches away from death. 
And there we go. That crush comes in. Nicely done there by uh, by Green. Greeny, greeny. Uh-oh. It's the early game GLA. The power does not go out. If, if Cloud had been able to do that, that might have been the end for Tank Guy. Cloud, I do like this attempt. He's got those Toxin Rockets, and he is using them on the Oil Derrick. The technical is going to go down, and these laser weapons are going to have to find a way to dislodge those, those RPG troopers. But Comanche is out immediately into the airfield. It's not a double airfield opening. It is an airfield into a war factory for Giraffe Cobb. Sometimes you will see an airfield general, an airfield general, an air force general go double airfield at the beginning. But in this case, Giraffe Cobb has gone airfield and war factory. Arms dealer is coming up. Delay of the palace, so it is going to be a double war factory build for most of these people. All right, palace is on the way for Aqualex, and palace is finishing up as well. Oh, actually, single for green, single war factory. He did go barracks as well, and a lot of stinger sites. So he was definitely worried about early game aggression. I love the Comanches in the back of the base. A little bit of harassment coming in here. Snipes the radar van of Aqualex and then goes for the harassment on the supply trucks after that. Great move there by Giraffe Cobb. Easy way to just jump to the other side of the map really quickly with a couple of Comanches and take down your opponent's radar and take down some of their economy as well. Chirp gets cleaned up in the back of Green's base. And the raptor comes back to nest. Unfortunately, Giraffe Cub has left these two stealth Comanches. I guess they're stealth, so maybe they can just hide out for a little while longer. Oh, quad cannon. Not going to be able to get them. That's lovely. They just escaped so nicely. They're going to get a supply truck as well. So an additional supply truck. There are four more here from Green. So he had to pull them to escape the mini gunners of Sherp, and now he's going to lose at least one of them to those Comanches. Cloud and Aqualex both heading to the low ground. I assume they're going for expansions, but we do have some Marauders. I think for the first time today, we get to see some Marauders out on the field. Green comes down onto the low ground. He brought his radar van with him, driving around with these quads. He's hunting him some, uh, some stealth Comanches. And yeah, I have to give it to Giraffe Cop. He's not doing massive damage, but the consistent harassment is a nice way to keep your opponents busy and keep your opponents focused on their side of the map. Cloud is the one moving out to attack Giraffe Cop, not Aqualex. Aqualex is totally distracted by these sneaky little stealth Comanches coming in the back door of his base. Tank guy really needs to get some reinforcements over here. USA Air Force is not ready to deal with this kind of firepower. Fortunately, the stealth Comanches are literally just avoiding detection here. Uh, quad cannons are getting jumped on. Four quad cannons down very quickly. Two more do. No, one more is going to get eliminated by the firebase. And these stealth Comanches are actually trading pretty well against the quads. If the quads go down, the scorpions will slowly but surely be picked off by these Comanches. And no, it's just not enough. The Comanches had to retreat. There's only three of them left, and there's reinforcements coming in from everybody. Going for the power plants, a good move here by Cloud to try and get as much value. He sees the reinforcements coming in from Tank Guy. Tank Guy is going to clean up all of these Scorpions, so you got to think what you can possibly trade out against in the short time that you have. Chirp even sends over an Assault Troop Crawler just to uh, make sure that there's a bit of extra defense. It was maybe a little late to the party of the uh, Save Aqua or Save Giraffe Cob party. A 10 Warthog Strike comes through the middle of the map. I guess he'll get the supply stash. Nope, not enough damage. Yeah, sometimes not all the Warthogs make it. Supply stash is here in the middle of the map. Ooh, that supply truck is, uh, this happens sometimes. You're supposed to build two supply trucks in theory, but because it's based on the Red Alert 3 uh, AI, the Red Alert 3 AI thinks that there should only be one supply truck here, and so you will see that 
I think like on half of the trucks that spawn, they will basically think that the ore node is taken, the quote unquote ore node, and uh, they will head off to some other place automatically. So it's one of those annoying things about the fact that this is a mod for Red Alert 3 and not actually its own game. One of those things that is difficult or possibly impossible to actually fix. But so that is that when you see that, that's not Cloud sending his supply truck off in a dumb direction. That's not someone uh, sending their supply truck off in a dumb direction. Uh, Cloud steps onto the low ground. Particle tanks versus rocket buggies. Warthog comes in. Nice shot comes off. Only gets one quad though. And Cloud is not going to be able to break open this front door. Tank guy might commit more forces down into the attack. Aqualex and Green are holding the middle of the map, but Sherp is looking like he wants to take on the fight. No super weapons yet. Okay, Sherp, never mind. Backs off completely. He's got these taskmasters, and he says, Never mind. Never mind. You guys, you guys are good. I see you all down there, and you're okay. You're okay to stay down there and just hang out. I don't need to I don't need to go down there and bother you guys. You seem like you've got it taken care of. And thus we reach perhaps the stalemate. So big thanks to Savage Regime, Blockade Runner, Brian, Gabriel F, Nikola Tesla, BBB, Havisman, Razor Crest, Lieutenant Victor, Brett A, K Rao, Milos M. These little spy drones that spotted and immediately get deleted. Big thanks to them as well as Milos M and David B. We're supporting the channel over on Patreon. Hey, Rebels in the back of the base. I love the level one Rebel surprise because it is just such a small amount of Rebels. The later one, especially if you are GLA demo, is legitimately almost another superpower. But the early levels of it, it's just so few rebels, just four rebels. They got little guns. They're like, pew, 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 pew. Not doing much at all. Not doing hardly anything. The middle of the map, sometimes it does tip your hand to who is going to actually win the game. Holding the middle of the map can give you a nice advantage. But super weapons are nice, too. We'll see. The north side has the middle. The south side has the first super weapon. But who else has super weapons soon to finish up? Not Cloud, it seems. He wants uh, black markets. Oh, I just realized it's a triple GLA team, which means they have scuds, which many people, well, not many. Some people consider to be the worst of the super weapons. So, two USA players in the south and a China versus three GLA. It might be a uh, super weapon fiesta, but only going in one direction. Stealth Comanches are nice, but as soon as you've got them, people sort of figure out that, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I would like to attack. Maybe I would like to defend myself from your Stealth Comanche attack. Oil Derek will not go down. Artie Strike fired off somewhere. Maybe it broke the bunker on the high ground. All right. He had enough power. Green had enough power to immediately start that countdown timer. Two and a half minutes on the particle, five minutes on the scud. Marauders, quads, rockets. Rebels, RPG troopers, everything is here for Aqualex. Cloud turns around. He's going to try and catch Tank Guy out in the middle of the map, but Tank Guy has so much stuff and a bunker that he can pull back to. Even a couple of mechanics out on the field. He's got no use for ambulances as he has barely any infantry out here. Sherp comes down from his high ground as well. Uh, they might be able to make a Cloud sandwich. That tomahawk from the high ground. Giraffe Cobb pushes forward. He's got those Humvees. Uh, trades against all of those RPG troopers. 
Green comes down, massive Scorpion tank army, and everybody is so cautious and cagey of each other. Cloud adds on two GLA Scud Storms, and Giraffe Cobb adds on his own, but he did not have nearly enough windmills for them. All right. Just about everybody is rounding out their super weapons. Aqualex is the only one we're waiting on. Maybe they will not draft any. They've got a nice, nice section of their base that could be dedicated to Scud Storms. Cloud still doesn't have his power online. Everybody else is ticking away. Tick, tick, tick. As they add on some of them second super weapons. The game takes a bit of a pause. We transition into a bit of a lull. ECMs are here. Those rocket buggy shots are getting split. Ah, Cloud. Maybe hoping to press forward. Rocket buggy's taking some shots at that bunker. Always posturing, always jockeying for position. The particle cannon is largely on the army of Cloud. Cloud splits away from it. Loses a couple of things, but not a lot. Tank guy was hoping he could uh, use that to open up the ramp and maybe get up into the high ground. Nice scan onto the high ground to start poking away at this army. Those particle tanks are just popping unit after unit. Laser tanks, and that is a rebel surprise into the middle of those units, but it is not enough. Ten super weapons are on the map, and Aqualex comes in with the flank. Just a double line of GLA rocket buggies. Firebase on the high ground trying to thin out the herd, but you can only have so many particle tanks. Comanches from the high ground chasing down those rocket buggies, deleting them one after another. A-10 Warthogs come in, force the sell off of three black markets. Meanwhile, it is a massive fight. Emperor's Rage fires off to intensify those guns a little bit more. And well, these quad cannons are going to just cut through the remaining ECMs because it is overwhelming numbers from green. Sherp is coming in with a second wave. His Taskmasters and his hum and Giraffe Cobb's Humvees coming down from the high ground. Are we going to end up in a situation where everybody has three super weapons because we are slowly climbing our way towards that, towards that place? 11 super weapons out on the field. Honestly, this ramp might be a good spot for that uh, Scud Storm. Especially if you could attack at the same time. Kind of squish the army between two fronts. All right. Party Strike fires off. Sneak Attack comes in, jumps onto the nuke as Cloud is hoping that he can shut down that nuke once and for all. He's hoping he doesn't have to worry about the nuke, and he will not. He will be able to clean that up. Laser Comanche's coming in, but they are too late. The nuke gets eliminated. One of the super weapons gets ended, and the Scud Storm finds its mark on the reinforcements of Sherp. Meanwhile, Tank Guy is trying to open up the base of uh, open up the base of Cloud, but also the reinforcements coming in from Aqualex get lit up by that particle cannon from the sky. Cloud sends all of his units to the bottom left-hand corner of the map, and he pays the price. His front door was undefended, and it's going to be up to Aqualex to come in and save him. Tank Guy leaving behind a couple of reinforcements, but he cleans up a war factory, and he's going to get the command center as well, maybe. 
three fully heroic sentry drones just blasting away at that command center. And the last sentry drone comes in for the reinforcements. Barely he gets it, just inches away from not going down. And now Laser Comanche's targeting down that war factory. A rocket buggy pops on out, but it's up to the RPG troopers to try and take down those Laser Comanches. And Cloud can rebuild. He can restock and refuel. But he loses a Scud Storm, one of his Scud Storms, counting down to zero, and the other one getting eliminated. Two particle cannons are almost ready, so you better be careful, Cloud. You better fire off that Scud Storm, and he does. He lands on the oil derrick of Tank Guy. And Tank Guy takes out the Scud Storm. He's got another particle cannon ready to go. Maybe on the army. That line of tanks would be a delicious spot to use that particle cannon. Toxin Scud does have that nice area of effect afterwards. Large inho inhospitable zone. All right, so we are down to only eight super weapons since Cloud lost his two and Sherp lost his. Cloud is just getting hammered again and again and again. He has rebuilt his command center, so he is okay in that sense. Giraffe Cobb is going to take his shot at Cloud. He's hoping his Humvees will be able to make it into the undefended nether regions of Cloud's base. Well, kind of. Forced to sell off of a couple of buildings, but ultimately all of those Humvees will be caught and killed. Unfortunately, Cloud did have that civ structure garrisoned up. All right, tank guy is ready. He is truly living up to his name. Giraffe Cobb also has a particle cannon ready and an A-10 Warthog strike and a carpet bomb all lined up. Honestly, this army... That might be a place for a, uh... Oh, no! Wrong button. Carpet bombing comes in. Particle cannon as well. And Cloud is just forced to recycle so many of his buildings and units. Just constantly getting them removed. And he's just rebuilding time and time again. Sherp is once again going up head-to-head -head with Green Guy. And Green Guy has a Scud ready to go. I think an Anthrax Bomb is about to come down onto this low ground. He's got some kind of support power coming in. Comanches are flying over the Anthrax. They're going for the Arms Dealer. And massive Anthrax Bomb on all of the reinforcements. They're trying to back up out of that area. But that's going to be a dangerous zone for a long time. That is huge damage on that high-tech army. Now, this would be a pretty money shot for that Scud Storm. These Comanches always trying to find a way to just do damage where someone isn't looking. Giraffe Cobb has been pretty darn active with those units all throughout this game. 30 seconds until the next Scud. It might be two at once. Well, no, he's found his spot. Almost on top of the army, contaminating the entire middle ground of Giraffe Cobb and Sherp's bases. 20 seconds until the next Scud. Yeah, that particle cannon is an excellent deterrent. And Green Guy says, hey, I've got my own kind of ideas about this. We'll see when he actually uses them. Humvees coming through the middle of the map. A couple of black markets here, or a black market and a couple of supply stashes, rather. Cloud is beaten back, but not defeated. Not by any means. And as long as he's got a couple of uh, black markets, he can certainly come back into this. Back up to 10 super weapons as Aqualex adds two of his own into the mix. Umbees driving deep into enemy territory. They get the Scuds. They might get this War Factory as well. 
Uh, a lot of Humvees going down. Another Scud does get eliminated. And on to the power plants, on to the supply drop zones. These guys are finding some serious high value areas. And Cloud is gonna try and defend himself from a particle cannon once again. I think that was his palace that just got eliminated. War Factory as well. And after so many rounds, you have to hand it to Tank Guy. Great production, great macro all throughout this. And getting to those super weapons first has given him a huge advantage. And also particle cannons are just so good. He's got another one firing off in just over five seconds. And the reinforcements, Cloud is always being bailed out by somebody. He is the shield that is taking the attack after attack after attack upon himself. And then the reinforcements come in from behind, but it may be too much this time. Carpet bombing comes in on top of green guy. Sherp is looking for that high damage, that high value damage to try and end the game, but no, it won't be enough. Fuel air bomb, carpet bombing once again on top of Cloud. Aqualex forced to sell off one of the Scud Storms, and still this particle cannon is ready to go, but Tank Guy doesn't want to use it. Not yet. He thinks there might be a better option, a better moment. Could use it on those oil derricks. Sneak attack comes in. Cloud tries to dodge this. Humvee reinforcements. I think that was Cloud's last attempt. I guess he's still in this. He's got a uh, couple of black markets and he does have a command center. But 30 seconds on one Scud, 20 seconds on the particle cannon. Tank guy MVP here says critical meds. You might be right. Oh no, they didn't, all of those reinforcements coming in and they didn't kill off those last couple of guys. Another sneak attack comes in this time from green guy. He's targeting down the power plants. He's trying to take tank guy offline. It looks like the scuds going to be landing on the army of tank guy and the particle cannon is the greatest defense. The best defense is an offense. No, the best defense is a particle cannon. That's what I say. Cloud is just like going ham. Nobody is paying any attention to him at the back of that base. Things are just turning absolutely chaotic. The mayhem has been going crazy. Once again, the Emperor's Rage or whatever it's called in Zero Hour, the, uh, the intensity amplifier, Emperor's Mist, blood red spray paint, Cheeto dust, something. Scudstorm lands in Giraffe Cop's base. I guess one advantage of having a highly mobile army is if you think the uh, the Scudstorm is coming for you, you try and dodge it. You got how you got Humvees, you got helicopters. You can sort of move in and out of areas very quickly. The black market survives. The Stinger sites do not. The war rages on in all areas of the map. Tank guy coming in. Green guy has been defeated. But tank guy coming in for another pass. Draft Cobb with a uh, particle cannon used somewhere. On the production of Aqualex. And it's not long until the next one will be ready. Well, it is ready. Who knows where it'll actually be used, though. Cloud has been defeated. It looks like game number six is wrapping up. Tank Guy crushing through time and time again, smashing into Cloud's base. And finally, someone able to just seemingly out macro Cloud and just crush him with sheer numbers. Cloud is normally that guy who just, you, you look at how he plays and it's like, he just builds way more stuff and does it way more consistently than anyone else. Mass Comanche comes in. 
I'm comfortable playing the music a touch early on this one. Who needs a Patriot missile system when you you when you have particle cannons? Says slow math. That is not some slow math. That is exactly right. As uh, that game gets wrapped up. Welcome to the idyllic farmhouse of Forgotten Forest for our first and only one v one of the day. Which actually, in Kane's Wrath, we also have a map called Forgotten Forest, which is not at all similar to this. They are very different maps. All right, on the north side, we have seen this guy before in this day as the red GLA vanilla. This is Abolashik. And on the south side of the map, playing as the orange GLA toxin, this is Sherp. We have seen both of these guys today at various points, and we're seeing them again now in a GLA mirror. Well, GLA versus GLA Toxin, close enough. But we get to see a 1v1. We get to see just a normal old match in Gen Evo. We've seen a lot of team and FFA craziness. Honestly, the whole run of games today has been really good. The level of play has been high enough and even the players that are sort of uh, mid-tier are still good enough and the games are entertaining enough. Uh, some of the earlier games of Gen Evo where people really didn't know what they were doing and it was a lot of experimentation and trying to figure things out, a lot of uh, searching in the darkness, the level of play was much lower than it is today. Tunnel directly in between those two supply centers. I love it from Sherp. That feels like someone who has gotten technical rushed a time too many. Hey, look at that. There's five technicals loaded up with units as well. Six technicals. All right. I don't know how many we're building, but that's a lot of technicals. Uh, by the way, Oil Derrick up there, Oil Derrick down there. Symmetrical, asymmetrical. This map is, uh, obviously, the layout of the bases is identical, and you are in opposite corners. But, uh, like, the aesthetic design of the map is a little bit asymmetrical, but in a way that is quite pleasing. One technical run by for sure. He's hoping he's going to be able to do some massive damage. He's actually, oh, for a second, he put his first volley into the supply stash. I think that was a bit of a misclick. It's going to be a massive technical response, though, as one, two supply trucks go down, and the technical and all of the RPG troopers for Sherp get eliminated. However, this does indicate to Sherp very clearly, yeah, my opponent has six, seven, eight, nine technicals, something like that, and they might be headed my way exactly now. I like the inclusion of a couple of buildings from both sides. They're trying to garrison up those civilian structures, and Sherp, not quite paying attention, is going to lose a technical almost for no reason at all. Engineer? I assume there was an engineer inside of it. He just forgot to eject that engineer from the technical. Abalashik going to be potentially taking that oil derrick in the top left-hand corner, but not right now. Poking and prodding away from each other. Palace is coming up for Sherp. Ah, okay. Third expansion instead. So a little bit more eco-focus from Abalashik. I feel like he should be getting a second War Factory or a Palace online soon, though. Sherp has both Double War Factory and a Palace coming online. The Oil Derrick is helping to make up some of the difference. Three Supply versus two Supply. There's the Engineer. Found it eventually. If this Rebel jumps out of there. Okay. He gets the Oil Derrick. Would have been nice for that Rebel to get the kill, but... We will see if the tech advantage for Sherp is able to make a difference. For the current moment... It's just mass technical versus mass technical. Sherp is not going for the oil derrick. He's going to get caught. 
Two technicals go down before Sherp can respond to much of anything, and this is just crash and burn from both players. There's a bunch of RPG troopers here for Abalashik, but they mostly get run over, and the reinforcements come over from Abalashik, and Sherp has to cut and run. There is no way for him to survive that massive amount of firepower from Abalashik. Quads are going to be the choice, but rocket buggies are also here for Sherp. By the way, big thanks to Swerdwer, Erwer, Camerness, Abalaba, Otterick C, Chris A, Mr. Calhoun, Jesse, as well as Schwan L and Beefy Shark for supporting the channel over on Patreon. A couple of rocket buggies sneaking into the corner. I like that this is just random super high ground. It's like double high ground in the corner with one building that you would probably never actually garrison up. But I guess you could. Radar van goes down. Love the snipe from Sherp. Poking and prodding. Not normally you would see a light harassment force with rocket buggies, but if it works, it works. I mean, you kill a, you kill a radar van, maybe not worth, but maybe he escapes. He might actually escape. Oh, he stops running, but they stop chasing. At the exact same time, the technicals give up the chase, and the rocket buggies escape. Supply stash is coming online for Sherp. Ah, well, the rocket buggies eventually go down. Wah, wah. Palace and Second War Factory get added on eventually for Abalashik. They are pretty equal in all things. Decent number of technicals, decent number of quads, decent number of rocket buggies. Are they both going to kill each other's oil, Derek, at almost the same time? He's in position. He could... Oh, he's, uh, I don't know what he's doing. I thought he was going to move down and kill the oil, Derek. Like, oh, you're killing my oil, Derek. Well, I'm going to go kill your oil, Derek. Although he might go engineer. I guess that would be one way. I'm going to take your oil, Derek, away from you. Tunnel Network coming up from Sherp. He's defending his own oil, Derek, while killing the oil, Derek, of his opponent. Always love a sneaky tunnel network if you can manage it somewhere on the map. Abalashik's macro and tech production, everything is really caught up with Sherp. But I feel like we're in a situation where both players have such massive armies that as long as no one is massively out of position, it's going to be difficult for either player to gain an advantage and be able to attack with it. We might sort of just wait until we're tier 3 or tier 4 general powers and then see the engagements come with a sneak attack at tier 5 or with some kind of other support power based advantage because right now it is sort of feeling like we might be into stalemate territory we must have a rally point over there on the right side of the map just sending random units into the very very far corner they send a bunch of uh, rocket buggies over there all right abalashik is reforming his Marmy into two attack groups, or maybe three attack groups, as he sends those technicals off by themselves. But he's got three distinct squads. Meanwhile, Sherp is walking into a bit of a trap. We'll see if Abalashik is able to accomplish anything over here on the left side of the map. There's a bunch of scorpions ready and waiting. They just missed the opportunity, so these supply trucks are going to get jumped on. Abalashik has to deal with this tunnel, but he might get the supply trucks and the radar van. This tunnel network is boiling these technicals alive. But fortunately, some of the RPG troopers are out of range. The tunnel network does go down. Some of the RPG troopers do survive. The crush should come through here for Sherp. He may also be winning the fight in the middle of the map, but he's not winning the fight at his expansion. Abalashik pushes in on the front line. And if he can dump, jump on this w arms dealer, the war factory in the production, of Sherp might be completely cut down. The technical surprise is actually 
the technical distraction as Sherp moves forward in the middle of the map. He's going on harassment with his war with his ra rocket buggies, but he might just lose his entire army back here in his main base. It's quad versus quad. The rebel surprise comes in from Abolashik. It stops the reinforcements from engaging with his army immediately, and Abolashik actually turns that into like a one for one. He gets the arms dealer and trades out the army pretty evenly. I feel like that's a win for Abolashik. He can't end the game right now, but killing off that war factory at least slows the production. Uh, it feels like if he would have been able to kill off these supply depots, he maybe would have been in a better spot to end the game, but there's still too many units on the map for sure. Massive trades back and forth for both players, but... In the end, Sherp is still in too good of a position to be simply knocked down. Oh, actually, he got the he got the supply trucks here, so actually it is three versus two supply for the current moment. I didn't quite register that. The oil derrick for Sherp does definitely help make up some of that difference. Sherp killing off the oil derrick of Abolashik is uh, was a perhaps an underrated move, but definitely a good one. Radar Van once again gets bopped. Black Market might be the next target. Uh, radar Buggies. Rocket Buggies. Gonna get cornered once again. Yeah, now that Black Markets are out as well, uh, Sherp should be adding them on himself. Sherp doesn't have them. Hmm. Sherp hasn't rebuilt his second War Factory. Feels like Sherp is definitely struggling on the income front. Another arms dealer. Three arms dealers to one. Double black market. Adding on a third black market would be even sicker. All without tunnel networks. Uh, Sherp hasn't done a ton of tunnel networks, but he built uh, four in total. Sells off that supply center. There's still 30,000 supply, 23,000 supplies there. A couple of RPG troopers left in the middle of the map. Quads might be able to clean them up, but honestly, that's a, that's a healthy little chunk. You'd need a couple of quads. Okay. I like this from Abolashik. A random assortment of RPG troopers. Like, if your opponent keeps trying to send rocket buggies over there, RPG troopers can be a really easy way to do that. And yeah, the RPG troopers can also eat up technicals. As long as they can do the burst damage, they'll clean up the technicals. Uh, Tox and Rockets, I assume, will win this fight, but they're not actually doing much more damage than just regular Rockets. So I think Abolashik kind of wins that fight as well. And that just, uh, you know, he trades out pretty evenly. Technical is still just hanging out in the middle there. Scan comes in from Sherp. He sees everything going on in the middle. Okay. I thought... <laughs> I thought that was going Abolashik's way. I didn't think it was... Uh, I didn't think he was tapping out right there. Whoopsie. That's the end of that. Our 1v1 comes to a finish. And that will be the end of this video as well. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.